good morning. Oh, here we go. Uh, bring the microphone over here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever you're doing, whoever you are, wherever you're at, whatever's happening. Hi, welcome. I'm Legal Vices, and this is Legal Vices. Mm -hmm. Let me get this thing set here. Oh, no, I'm here, Flux. I am not late and Keffels. I am exactly on time. So, so there. Uh, <laughs> How are we all doing? We came back from the the uh, Queen's funeral yesterday, and today it's kind of back to business as usual. The internet looks like it's being a little bit spotty over here on my side. Um, of course it is. Uh, it was running. All right, it looks like we're. I'm just running a couple of background tests because I don't want it to start sucking like it uh, did a couple of weeks ago with pausing every little bit. Yeah, we've got a little bit of an issue, but. All right, we're going to do our best to get through today without too many uh, pauses and stops and starts and things. We don't have too many windows going on, so um, we should be we should be pretty okay. Uh, where are we all? We're, well, oh, Salty's here. We uh, we've had a little bit of backstage chat. Welcome to most of you that were here. Uh, we've got a lot to cover today, and by a lot, I mean a lot. Um, just as far as actual length of video time goes, we're looking at about two and a half hours today if we decide we want to go through with all of this. Um, we, if, we, if we break it up into two separate streams, eh, we could do that, but I don't want to lose the momentum. So my, my plan is just to try to kind of keep it under three hours today. <laughs> so hope to be out of here in about three hours from now, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens uh, with, with me and my inability to just watch something without stopping it a hundred times get the, the stash out of the way so i can enjoy my my cocktail i have a delicious manhattan that i whipped up oh this is this is good stuff it's manhattan day today mm. yum normally i would have it in a martini style cocktail glass but today i want to drink other stuff when i finish so i made it in that glass all right Wow. Yeah, if, <laughs> if they would have just cast me in the lead role, none of this would have happened. Uh, exactly. So what are we going to do today? What's going on today is that we're going to be looking at uh, two videos, hopefully get through both of them. The first one we're going to be looking at is the very, very first interrogation of Sarah Zachary. Uh, the one that we watched last time, which we split over two parts, was in the police station. This in, in the sheriff's station, right? Or sheriff's department, whatever you want to say. This one, this video is right after the shooting. I mean, she's still crying from the shooting. Uh, that's how soon after the shooting the police were talking to her. They're talking to her in one of the sets, I believe. Either one of the dressing rooms or one of the sets. I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, she's she's sitting there and she is... Uh, She's still crying, trying to compose herself after the shooting when they get a hold of her. And then after that, it's a uh, it's a longer one. It's about a two hour questioning of uh, Jensen Ackles, who uh, I know him as as Dean Winchester on the uh, on the show Supernatural. Uh, he was also on set, so um, I haven't watched any of these. As as those of you that have been following these uh, interrogation videos with me from the beginning, I don't watch them beforehand. I want to experience them directly with you and if you have seen them and if any of you have watched these 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 investigations please no spoilers in the chat just don't don't tell us what happens don't tell us what they say don't tell us what to look for let us all kind of enjoy it together uh no spoilers if you've seen these videos i haven't and i think most of the people here haven't so let's just kind of let's kind of keep it that way and so we can all experience the excitement without having it uh, spoiled for us that's my that's my Alec Baldwin request. Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, like said, we've got a lot to cover, so I'm going to try not to ramble too much here at the beginning. I want to thank everyone that joined me for the Queen's uh, funeral last night. You can check that out. It was it was pretty pretty quiet, pretty solemn, and then at the end, uh, while we were watching them drive for 30 kilometers, we started to kind of go off the rails a little bit but we ended up fun it was it was solemn like i said it was solemn it was somber we somehow managed to have fun at the same time uh, it was great for all of you here uh john Byrne asks how will you celebrate your twenty five thousand? well i i'm i i have what do we have three weeks well two and a half weeks uh to reach 
twenty-five thousand before my next Effort Friday drunken grift stream. I currently need what do we need? Sixty? No, I can't do math. Damn it! Thirty plus seventy got thirty-two. So I need sixty-eight more, <laughs> sixty-eight more subscribers in the next two and a half weeks to get to twenty-five thousand. Um, I assume I'll get there a lot. I mean, quite a while before Effort Friday, which will be October seventh. Um, so what I'm planning on doing is Friday, the Friday the seventh will be my twenty five thousand subscriber drunken grift stream. Uh, we'll talk about the usual BS we usually talk about on on Effort Friday, and uh, I'm just going to kind of go back and I'm going to send out uh, invitations to everybody that uh, I've ever worked with here on YouTube and just sort of. Let them all come in and, and say hi if they can, if they want to, if their schedule matches. Because my schedule here in Korea matches almost nobody's schedule on Earth. Right now it's 9.07 p.m. for me, 8 a.m. on the East Coast of America. As I mean, 7, 6, 5, it's 5 a.m. on the West Coast. So is, it, my, my stream time is not conducive to a lot of a lot of people who work normal days in the U.S. Uh, but I'm going to send out the invitations anyway and see if uh, people want to drop in when they come. Uh, so that's, that's the plan. October 7th will be the 25,000 member stream. Uh, it'll also be my, the dog is like demanding attention. Doesn't, doesn't want to pay any attention whatsoever to me all day until I start talking. I guess here's my, Yoda, here's my voice. Is, oh, you must be talking to me because I'm dumb. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll do the October 7th will be the effort Friday drunken grift stream, but it will also be the 25,000 subscriber stream so it, it hopefully it'll be a complete train wreck it'll be awesome all right um <laughs> with that out of the way we got a we got a lot of viewers here and a lot of you don't care about anything i'm rambling about so we're going to jump right into these videos just let me say we got 150 61 of you here now 67 likes that means 100 if you haven't done your job get down there you 100 that haven't done anything and hit that subscribe button so we can take this thing off and take it off solid we can get the uh get the bump from youtube if you haven't already subscribed please hit that subscribe button do help me ease my way to 25,000. Um, we have we have memberships you can join. Just click, click the join button right below the video and that'll take you to the page. You get access to all the uh, the weird little emojis we have that uh, one of our very own viewers, John, has made. Um, John Byrne, who's actually asking uh, what we're going to be doing. So, so we'll be doing... Uh, We'll be using his emojis. And as always, I try to watch the stream. Times like this where we're watching videos, I have a little bit more time to look at the screen, but uh, not too much more because I'm usually talking and or paying attention. But I'll try to watch and keep, keep up with the chat. If you definitely want to be sure that I get your comments in, Super Chat's the way to go. Uh, not because there's there's no minimum, re there's no requirement to Super Chat. There's no minimum amount to Super Chat to get me to pay attention to you. I love all of you equally. The only reason that Super Chats get the prior well, priority are one, people paying their hard-earned money to say something to me and to get a question to me and two it flashes like bright orange at me or bright green or bright blue or what you know pops up in the peripheral vision and i go oh there's something to pay attention to so that's it uh i'll try to get some chats but if you definitely want to make sure i read it make sure i answer the questions make sure i address it super chats is the way to go otherwise we'll just do our best with that like, we have two and a half hours of video to get through um if we don't get through it all today Come on back and watch it on the replay. And when you do, make sure you leave a comment. All right, here we go. This is Prop Master Sarah Zachary. And this is on a new channel. Uh, crime. We usually use the Crime Circus videos, but uh, Crime Circus has made another channel called Crime Circus Cult. And that's where these videos are located on Crime Circus Cult. I reached, I've emailed him. I want to get, I want to get the guy behind Crime Circus on here to watch one of these videos with me, but no answer yet. Um, I'm trying. That would be awesome to have him here to interview him and then watch, uh, watch some interrogation videos together. Uh, hi, Prashada. Thank you so much for the dollar hot dog. <laughs> Thank you so much. That is deeply appreciated. All right. That's out of the way. Let's hit the interrogation. No spoilers. First time for me. Hopefully it's the first time for you as well. And we are off. <laughs> I like drip drop. I so. I want drip drop on my stream. I am. <laughs> I 
We did too. <laughs> we did too. We were commenting on the size of her feet. That's funny. Oh, didn't I? What? What do you mean? You can't just. Oh, you know what? There's a reason for that. Because I had the wrong screen up. You're. We're just watching Drip Drop Talk. There we go. I've got some other good interrogations that I want to release from this series. And I hope you're interested. No. Anyways. <laughs> let's see what Sarah has to say for us. Oh, y'all just watch, watch Drip Drop here. Show his 100,000 subscriber thing and wear his little spidery blood tear paint and talk. You missed absolutely nothing. And because you're calling me a boomer and making me stop to address it, now you've just made us a two hour and 31 minute production self this first time her second interrogation is available on crime circus now let's jump right into this i was laughing at the audio oh, here we go. Well, Are you, yeah. okay. you're okay yeah okay yeah. yeah there's some in here you good okay. yeah Sarah, I'm gonna be right outside. Uh, okay, thank you. Always here. Yeah, that's how that's how soon after this happened, she still can't breath. breathe. There you go. Sorry. You're okay. Take another deep breath. All right, you all want my ADHD comments? Here it is. It's a murder mystery, so we've got the uh, the Sherlock Holmes esque calabash pipe today. You haven't seen this pipe before. Now, oddly enough, this is this pipe is super associated with uh, Sherlock Holmes, but in the books, he never, ever, ever smoked a calabash pipe like this. Um, the reason it's done on film was because it has this great center of balance, and so the actors could just let it dangle from their lips, which you can't really do with another pipe. So that's why they use the calabash pipe for Sherlock Holmes in the movie. But wow, we've got... Uh, We've got Rose. You've gifted five Legal Vices memberships to some lucky people who are John Gordon, Bernice Conkin, Melissa Jane, Melissa D, Paul Goodyear. Thank you so much. Congratulations to your, your gift memberships. And thank you, Super Mod Rose. That is so nice of you and so appreciated. Um, let's get on with it. <laughs> I'm going to ask for one more. Okay. All right, Sarah. I want to start just with your name, basic information. Yeah, sure. Sarah Zachary. Z-A-C-H-R-Y. Do you by chance have an ID on you? Uh, it's in my bag. Okay, no, that's fine. Okay. Zachary? Yeah. And what is your DOB? Seven. Oh, okay. instant karma. You're just here. You just, you just jump into my streams blindly. Bless you. You don't even care what we're talking about. We are watching prop master in the rust, Alec Baldwin rust shooting the prop master, Sarah Zachary's very, very first interrogation questioning by the police. If you want to, if, if, if you viewers haven't seen the other ones, uh, go back to my channel. I'm at, I think I actually have all of these in a playlist. I've had lots of people bitch at me and tell you, you just call me a lazy ass. Cause I don't have a, uh, I don't have playlists for these videos. So I'm going back and I'm making playlists. I think all of the Alec Baldwin shooting videos are in a playlist now. So if you haven't seen the other interrogations, go back and watch them. We have lots of them there. There's a, uh, we've done four or five five invest in interrogation videos so far maybe six i can't remember we've done a lot we just do them as they come out so yep here we go this is alec baldwin's shooting the prop master who's looking pretty damn rough here having just been at the scene of a murder and yes well, alleged murder uh but yeah he did bad flux. Thank you so much for the super chat. Always appreciated. Just dropping my usual pants or prison super chat in support of the shenanigans. Well, great. Flux just dropping her pants there. That's what we're all about here on Legal Vices. Doesn't hurt anybody. It's legal. Phone Yeah, I don't know what this location and, is. It, it, uh, it's a dressing room or something. Uh, seven, five, Hotel two, room. Two, I don't know. Wait, what is it? <laughs> seven, five, seven, five, two, three. Yeah. 
Uh, how do you spell that uh, lesson? Uh, it's salad with an O. Salad with an O. Salad, salado. Okay, quick cookie. ABQ. Do you know your zip code? 87120. And what is your official title here? Prop master. Prop master. Okay. Did you grow up in New Mexico? I did. Yeah? Yeah. Down in Albuquerque? Yeah. yeah. So I, I uh how old are you? Twenty-four. Twenty-four? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um do you live by yourself? No, I live with my parents. Okay. Yeah. I mean my fiance's outside, so I'll be living with her. Okay. So he's here for you? Yeah. Good, now, good, good. Just, okay. Just noting um, things so here. Your, this is the police of Dog, stop it. The police have just gotten on site. Um, she hasn't been read her rights. This is just a questioning. Uh, it's not really it's not really an interrogation as a subject or a suspect. Um, I have no indication that she's been read her rights. I think this is just the police initially trying to figure out what the hell happened. And then they call her in later for another round of questioning. So as far as I know, no rights have been read. This is just as a witness. And I mean, at this point, fair enough. You're not going to be thinking about having a lawyer with you. You're just going to be answering the police questions. I mean, in a magical world, yeah, she would have had her lawyer, but can't falter in this case. Your fiance are, are both working on set? No, he, he works at Cindia, it's, uh, but I work with his sister and she's my... Yes, boss. this is the blonde girl with the big feet. Okay. <laughs> so um, how long have you guys been working together as uh, an assistant or team? And this is her first film. Okay. So his sister is who? Nicole. Miss Nicole? Yeah. Okay, so Miss Nicole... Uh, Miss Sarah, and there's one more girl, correct? Hannah. Miss Hannah. Okay. So have you all three been working together um, since the beginning? Since the beginning of this film, yeah. Okay. So that was maybe two weeks ago? Yeah, about. Okay. Do you know exactly what your start date was? Um, my start date was September 27th. Okay. Mm. And September 27th. Hannah, I think, started that Tuesday. So whatever okay. Do you all have the same job? No. Um, Hannah's the armor, and then um, Nicole is a prop assistant. And are, and you are a, a prop master. Prop master. Okay. Um, master. I don't so, know. So, well, uh, what does a prop master do versus the armor and prop assistant? <clears throat> so, for the props, my main job is to bring in anything with the actors touch for the movie and okay this is a good thing here this is an interesting thing the they're asking these what do you do what are your responsibilities what are your job she's answering them as she understands them right now she doesn't have time to go process it and try to think of a better answer or think of a better explanation or try to think of a a job description where it focuses the attention away from her uh so let let's see how she initially answers this question while the uh I, you know, we don't even know if we don't we don't we don't even know if the uh, if the victim has been moved yet. Uh, so this is fresh. So let's see what her fresh answers are. The armor is the one who deals with the guns. Okay. So um, I mean, uh, I brought in the guns, mm. but then uh, armor is hired to work with them. Okay. Uh huh. And that would be uh, consistent with with September twenty seventh to today's day. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Miss Hannah would be the one providing you the firearms. You then give the firearms to who? Well, Hannah's the one who typically yeah, gives them to the actor. Okay. So I helped her out um, with kind of assisting with armor, okay. but um, she's the one who loads them and gives them off. Okay. Um, all right. Hmm. What time did you guys start working this morning? 6.30. Okay. And what time did you guys break for lunch? Uh, 12, 12.30. Okay. So, um, Ms. Sarah, between 6.30 and 12.30, um, did any of you handle any of the firearms? We did before lunch, um, but only with dummy rounds, okay. which is strictly, it has nothing, no projectiles, no gunpowder. It's just there for the look of it if the camera gets an angle, like so that way it looks like the gun is full. Okay. Um, 
And help me understand what is a, uh, I don't work camera sets, so what's a dummy round? So a dummy round, it looks like a bullet. It's not a blank, so it can't shoot. Like okay. it doesn't fire anything. If you hit it, if the hammer hits it, nothing happens. Okay. So my interpretation of that with, with my knowledge of firearms, and it, we know there's a revolver involved. So um, there's a cartridge. Well, mm. the cartridge has, uh, and the bullet has been already uh, fired. So there's a simply an empty cartridge. I mean, it's empty. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you just because I'm not a camera. I don't know how, what, like everything is right. in it. So, but I just know with the dummy, there's mm. nothing in it for it to actually shoot out. Okay. Um, is a dummy around crimped? Uh, what is that? Like, is it squished? Is there, is mm. with a dummy around inside the gun? No. Okay. What? It, I mean, I don't have anything to show you. There was a box that we had on set, I believe. That um, it's see. not a bullet to shoot no, dummies. This big. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so, what type of firearms were you guys handling um, between before lunch? Um, before lunch, we we had, I believe. Three I think they're sorted. I think I think these um, videos are in the they playlist. They all are basically the same as the pistol that you guys have. Okay, so, so revolvers. The or yeah, the revolvers. Um, the two others that were dumbed up on set, they just have a shorter barrel than the one that was used in the incident. Okay, so what time did you guys get? Uh, after in, in the other video, she was wearing a white cream colored dress. She was tall. She was sitting with her lawyer, and she had like really big feet. One twenty, maybe one fifteen, one twenty. Okay. And what happened after that? After that, we we always uh, lock back up the guns in our truck before, uh, anytime we leave so that way no one can get a hold of them. Okay. And so we took those back out of the truck, took them to our cart, and I put the badges on... Um, on our actors and Hannah took the gun to go give to Alec because it, it was for his holster. Okay. What, what, uh, what you said badges, just what's that mean? And they, they have badges kind of like what you guys were. And well, yeah, the yeah. metal ones. Okay. They were, they were we don't need no stinking actors. badges. Okay. Just identify <laughs> them as an actor and who, who is who. Yeah. So, um, we gave badges to Swen, and Jensen, okay. and then Alec doesn't have one. Okay. Um, so you, is, is this happening simultaneously? Yeah, everything happens simultaneously, so that way we can get the shot set up. Okay. Right, right so you're giving badges, and then Miss Hannah's mm -hmm. uh, loading the revolver. Yeah. Okay. Did you see her load the revolver? I did not. Okay. So uh, where... Uh, where was she loading the revolver? Most likely at our cart. Okay. And the cart, describe that. Our cart, it's a two-tier, four-wheeled um, cart, and it, it it's rectangular and gray. Okay. Um, and we just, we carry most of our stuff on it. Most of it is ammo, guns, some miscellaneous props that we have to have for that scene and just our personal bags. So uh, you didn't see her load the weapon today? I didn't. Okay. What was your understanding on what type of, um, I'm gonna, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what type of bullets, what type of cartridges mm -hmm. were supposed to be loaded into the revolver. The they cops aren't just, asking the greatest the questions rounds. either. Dummy rounds. Yeah. Okay. And how does Miss Hannah uh, uh, keep dummy rounds? Keep them? Yes. And they're they're usually either in the box or sometimes we'll have to pull them from the gun belts. <laughs> Worst so. porno yeah. ever. I hate it when they try to do too much story. Okay. Oh, nice. So um, they're in a box. To, um, are they individually set? Like, have you ever shot a gun? Not a real one. No. Okay. Have you ever seen uh, real bullets in a case? No. Um, so when you're in the box, are they? Do they have their each individual like, like let's, slot? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how does Miss Hannah designate them as dummy rounds? So, um, well, I mean, first of all, I mean, they the box has dummy rounds, but then the way that you know they're. Dummy 
No, they, it's a uh, Mr. Squiggles badges. They were not impersonating officers. They're making a Western with sheriffs and things. So they have badges, <laughs> you know, props. That means is if you shake them, they rattle. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Okay. And the other way you can tell is that the like wadding or the lead at the top, that scene with a blank that actually, you know, fires for the purpose of sound, mm -hmm. that comes to a point. So okay. you can kind of tell the difference. So a dummy round should not even have a point on it. No. Okay. And so for today's scene, there was supposed to be dummy rounds. There was no supposed to be no, uh, to get a, a sound, what are those uh, props called, if you will? Oh. Cartridges or bullets? Uh, blanks? But, so, or, blanks. Right, is that what you're talking about? Well, to get a sound. Oh, to get yeah. a sound. Those are blanks. Uh, yeah. Well, those ones are the blanks. Okay. Yeah, the dummies don't do anything. Okay, so. <laughs> Just I, like I, you. I might be ahead of myself, so today's was Dummies are blanks. Dummies. 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 So they shouldn't even Nothing fire. should, you shouldn't hear anything. That nothing should ever happen with them. Okay. Um, and you did not see Miss Hannah load the, the firearm? I did not. Okay. Oh, you, uh, oh, wait a minute. I, I recall her saying later that they loaded it together. That she was sitting next to her when she was loading it. And she was helping load the other guns, if I remember correctly. I I seem to think that she said they were together when they were when they were loading, because that's how because only five of the only five of the uh, the the cartridges would go in. They had a problem getting the sixth one, so they when they decided to go to lunch and then clean it and do it when they got back. Uh, if I remember correctly, she was there when they were when it was being loaded. Where were you when the firearm was uh, given to Alec? Um, I might have been no. back at the truck because I know we forgot one of the guns. Okay. Never heard that before. So who else was supposed to have a gun? Jensen and Swain. Okay. They have the same uh, the same gun. There is just two of them. And so one of them was left back in the gun safe. And okay. so I just went back to get it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back. You said that you guys leave the guns in the truck and lock them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just to, because we need to be precise here. Mm -hmm. um, you said you locked them in the truck, but now you just set a safe. Um, yeah, there's is, a safe in the truck. Okay. Yeah. And where is that safe at? Um, so, um, when you get on our truck, if you enter in from the tail side, yeah. it's literally at the back end on the right. So okay. right when you jump in. And does anyone have, uh, other than you three, does anyone else have access? No. Oh, we'll we'll get there. Hang the tight. Safe? There's a code. Okay. Does anyone but yes else is have the answer. Code? No. Okay. Um, so you were at the, the truck getting another gun for Jensen or the other actor. Mm -hmm. um, so you didn't see uh, who uh, handed the gun to Alec? No. Okay. And um, <clears throat> we're going to go back. You're going, you're giving badges and Miss Hannah was loading the, the revolver. And then what do you remember after that? Um, I remember just talking with a few different crew members just you know just casual conversation okay. and then um nicole and i were at our cart like getting i don't know what we were doing at the cart. we were doing something and then we heard the shot go off okay. then what happened um i ran over to see what happened i just saw joel on the floor uh, we, uh, you know, at first everyone thought it was like one of those poppers because I didn't think there was even a gun on set yet because both of the ones that um, that I was working with hadn't been on set yet. Okay. And uh, and so everyone thought it was like this popper that comes from special effects, but then I, I was told that Alex's gun was on set. Okay. Uh. L Lil Lanzang, Angie says, you know, even if this is just questioning, should she still have a lawyer presence? Kind of, you know, like I was saying at the beginning, this is literally minutes 
after the shooting. I don't even know if if uh, the victims have been taken to a hospital yet. They may still be in the other room trying to get them stabilized. This, this is like immediately as soon as the police get there. Uh, she's still crying from the situation. So, I mean, in a, in, a tr- in, a, in a nice world, in a perfect world, you'd want to have a lawyer with you. But in reality, you would just watch. You watch. You, know, you don't watch. You st- you hear people get shot. You run to the scene. You see blood everywhere. The cops show up and think, wow, what the hell happened? Let's in tell us what happened. You, I mean, in reality, your first thought isn't, well, I shouldn't be speaking to you. I'm going to go get a lawyer. Uh, so I, I can forgive her for not having a lawyer here at this point. Uh, this is just way too fresh. And it would be super sus, I think, if there was like a bang and her first thought was, I'm going to go get a lawyer. Uh, that wouldn't look very good for her. So I mean, it's natural that she doesn't have a lawyer here, I think. I mean, nobody nobody would 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 have a lawyer at this point in reality, unless they really really had a good reason to have a lawyer there. Uh, but again, she's this isn't under oath, as far as I know. As far as I know, she hasn't been read her rights, so none of this would really be admissible as evidence against her because she hasn't been read her rights, as far as I know. Then what happened? <clears throat> So you went inside and you saw... I, did, I never went inside. Oh, okay. I just saw from outside. I looked in through the doorway from a distance and I saw Joel on the ground. Okay. Um, <clears throat> when you were outside, did you see... Uh, um, where was Miss Hannah when, when the gunshot went off? Uh... I don't know. I said no That's spoilers. I can give a <laughs> direct answer. So after... I know she was on set, so, uh, not on set, but she was outside somewhere. Okay. So um, after the... Let me ask you, how many gunshots did you hear? One. Okay. And after um, after everyone realizes there was an actual projectile or and people were injured, um, did you see... Uh, Miss? Did you, did you run into Miss Hannah outside? Um, I did. She started panicking. Mm -hmm. Um, she started freaking out and she just said that there was no way that there was something in it. And she said that it was going to like ruin her career. And I saw her go talk to Dave to go check the gun. And she came back over and was crying and she held out the, the, the dummies and one of them didn't have its uh, like lead end on it and so she said somehow it popped off and um that was it and then she was taken away for to kind of try to calm down right so tell me about that uh what did you see when her and dave were uh talking Mm -hmm. they were looking at the gun she i think she was trying to show them that they were supposed to be dummies okay and um, so they were looking at the gun. Um, were all of the cart- the, the dummies, the cartridges, I'm going to say cartridges, were they at that point, like, was the gun tipped upside down? It was because she took them out of the gun. Okay. And um, then her and Dave did what with, with the cartridges? Uh, I mean, I think she just kept them. I, I didn't see directly what she was doing because then... I was distracted with everyone's reactions, but she, I think she just held them because then later she brought them over to show me. Okay. After she showed you, uh, what did she do with them? Um, I took them back to, no, I just took the the one empty one and I took it back to the our cart, but I don't know what happened to the other ones. The one, When you say the one mm-hmm. empty one? The one that went off. Okay. And... Um, what did you do with that? I went to go check to see what box it came from. No, no, these were di- these were different bullets. Hang on, the rest hang tight. Of the Stand box by. That it was in, mm-hmm. and what I the rest. Hang on a second. Um, go back. What did you do with that? I went to go check to see what box it came from, and I started comparing it to the rest of the box that it was in, mm-hmm. and what I found was that there were some that rattled and others that didn't. So okay. it led me to believe that 
there were others in there that were live rounds. And is that box still on the card? Uh, yes, unless if you guys took it, I don't, I don't think it was ever moved. We haven't touched anything yet. Okay, yeah, then it's probably when you there. looked. But when you looked and you left the cart, mm -hmm. was that box still on the cart? Yeah. Okay. What color is that box? White. White? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, there, I'm just saying there's a lot of white boxes on okay. that cart. It's going to be on the top. It's going to be on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that. The, the one that went off, you had in your hand. Mm -hmm. Where did you do with what did you do with that one? It should still be there on the cart, off mm -hmm. on the side. It's not in the box. Okay. And you don't know what happened wait, to wait. the other four. No, because Miss Hannah had them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now. Uh, a couple things to clarify here. One about my videos. Um, I have some of the some of the, of the videos in a playlist. I do not have the Alec Baldwin videos in a playlist yet. I was just I was just looking at the at, at my uh, my channel now, and I don't have the Alec. I'll get, I'll get the Alec Baldwin's playlisted up soon, so that you you can go back and watch these things. Um, the one. And being asked, what was the what was the title of the video? Her, it's, it's the video we reviewed previously, but it actually takes place in a timeline after this. Um, the title of that video, scrolling back through here, uh, we, we've pretty much done one of these a week. So if you just go back a few weeks, uh, yeah, there's the FBI report, and going back again, update, there's the OSHA report. The exact title of this video is Prop Master Sarah Zachary Interrogated About Alec Baldwin Shooting. And the first part is on July 9th. Uh, go back to July 9th in my playlist, and then you'll see the next interview of her in the, in the timeline. And then uh, a week later is part two of that interview. It, it's, the same, it's one interview, it was one interrogation. It was, I split it into two videos because it was really long. So the first one is on July 9th, and it's just called Prop Master Sarah Zachary Interrogation, blah, blah, blah. So the other thing is, is these magic bullets, these bullets. Um, we knew, we, and I asked, uh, I asked a few days ago on, on one of my, my community posts, um, what, we, where, was the, where did she mention throwing the bullets away in the previous interrogation? And I went back. And thank you for, for those of you that know what the hell's on my videos more than I do. Uh, <laughs> we, we found it. And what she said in that video was that she, she went back to the cart and then she took the firearms from the other actors. And then she said she threw those rounds in the garbage. I, I had thought it was, it was uh, some of the rounds that came from the, the gun that that shoot Hel that shot Helena, but it wasn't. It was it was, I and I thought, okay, maybe it was from the box. It wasn't bullets from the box. She had taken the the uh, rounds from the other actors that had guns on set and threw those away. So that's kind of a that's kind of an interesting distinction. But let's see if she mentions. Let's see if she mentions about throwing the, the bullets from the other actors' guns in the garbage out of a panic. Uh, I, like I said, this is exactly the point. I watched the first 20 minutes because I wanted to see how it looked. Uh, but And that's, as soon as I saw that, I got to that point and I stopped and said, all right, I've got to have my people tell me uh, tell me where that thing about her throwing away the, the bullets is. Because, she, yeah, she didn't throw away the bullets that were in the gun that did the killing. She didn't throw away the bullets in the box. She said that she threw it away in a panic, the bullets from the other actors' guns that she took away. Well, of course she shouldn't, she still shouldn't have thrown anything away. I mean, of course. Uh, but I, I, I was, I wanted to see if she had said that she'd threw away the other rounds because then that would be really, really, really bad if she didn't say it at this point. But uh, yeah, so it's kind of a, a, she shouldn't have thrown any bullets away, but yeah, she did. But I just want to see if she mentions it here. Um, did anyone else, um, or were they standing next to you when you were rattling the other yeah. Nicole? Okay, cool. And, um, I'm assuming the gun that, uh, Alec had is on the cart? Cart. Um, 
Yes. Well, actually, that part, I don't know. Last I saw when they wanted to talk to Hannah, she had it with her because I think they wanted it as well. Okay. You know what? I think our lieutenant said that he retrieved it, so okay. we're good on that. Okay. Um, do they usually, I'm just curious, do they usually use live rounds during these sets? No, absolutely not. No. No, that is like prohibited. That's the most dangerous thing. You, you, the oh, there was no orders. No, could be, there's should be no time. There's nothing. Is a full blank. Nothing like and that. And that's hardly ever used. So from you, you know, comparing the rounds from your experience, uh, dummy rounds and blanks, you said that you noticed that some of them look like live rounds. Yes. Uh, are they a lot different from both blanks and dummy rounds? The ones um, that you saw? The Well, so dummies are a lot different than the blanks. Uh, but from what I saw in the box, the live rounds, I didn't know that, that we had live rounds in there because um, we get these from suppliers. And, um, and it was a full box that we pulled from. And so the only way that you could definitely tell is by shaking it. But with yeah. the blank, you can identify it because it's like, it has kind of a point and it's like kind of crimped around the edges. Okay. Okay. Yeah, remember when they asked you that question like uh, 10 minutes ago and you didn't know what they were talking about? <laughs> you literally said you didn't know what, you, what the cop meant. Now you're just saying the same thing. And sometimes there. Who's the spy for you guys on this set? Um, so. <clears throat> I know that Hannah had some of her own ammo that she brought from another production. There's another guy that um, we get from, his name is Seth Kenny. And then we also got extra dummy rounds from a guy named Billy Ray. Okay. So uh, Seth Kenny, mm -hmm. where's he from? He lives in Albuquerque. Okay. Both him and Billy Ray. Billy Ray, okay. Um... Do you know specifically today's box where that came from? I do not. I didn't see what was written on the box. Okay. How long have you been working um, on? Uh, I apologize, but as mm. it's a uh, set manager or uh, prop, maker, or prop uh, master. Prop master. I apologize. Yeah. Um. Probably close to a year, I believe. No. Yeah, okay. This was her third movie she's worked on. And she's the prop master at her third movie. And the prop master does have sort of, the, they're like the level up from the armorer. Uh, and she knows nothing about anything she was dealing with. In fact, a couple of days before this, she had discharged a blank towards her foot. And had there been an actual live round in that one, she would have blown her damn foot off. So, yeah. And um, you, uh, I'm going to go back. You said that Miss Hannah said that she's probably going to ruin her life or her career. Um, why did she say that? Uh, uh, just, I mean, you know, this happened to Brandon Lee a long time ago, and you know, these kind of incidences sometimes prevent you from being rehired. Right. Okay. Do you know if she was a certified armorist? She should be. Okay. I, believe, I believe she has a license for it. Okay. Let's see, and this is another thing. She wasn't like that. Even Hannah didn't know if there was any qualification, like certifications for her to, to be an, an armor on set. But the fact that the prop master doesn't even know if the armorer who works under her had any type of license or certification to actually be doing the job. Kind of tells you what a shish. I mean, everybody here in the chat, you know, not everybody. I mean, some of you here in the chat are talking about these grand conspiracy theories, you know, that, that uh, you know, they're being ordered by you know, Baldwin or being ordered by somebody to protect the, your ass, to just dispose of things. Everybody's being shady. And do, I think it's just an absolute disastrous fuck up. I think it's, it's just an absolute amateur shit show at this, on this place. Everybody's amateur. Nobody has any experience. Alec Baldwin and the other producers, you know, they're trying to save money, making low budget shit, not taking care of the crew, not taking care of safety. The the you know camera crew walked off the day before because of safety concerns and because of treatment concerns. You know, it's just I I don't think there's any grand conspiracy thing here. I think it's arrogant people on the on the 
actor side, specifically Alec Baldwin, who doesn't want any, he didn't want any training. He refused any training, said he didn't need it. And then you had, as the, uh, the OSHA safety report showed, they were, she was being told, Hannah was being told that she, she, although she was hired on as the armorer, they were only going to pay her for eight days as armor. And the rest of the time she had to work as a prop person as an assistant prop person. And she told them the uh, day before this, one or two days before the shooting, that she'd already used up her eight days as armorer. And they told her, don't do any training. Don't do any classes. Don't bother Alec. They specifically told her not to do her job and to stop wasting her time on armorer stuff and do the prop stuff. It's just a shit show. I mean, to me, I, I, at the beginning, it was interesting. It was interesting to think uh, that there might be some sort of, you know, cover up going up. I, as I've seen more and more of these interrogation videos, I've, as I've read the FBI reports, if I've read the OSHA report, it just seems that it's an absolute amateur hour here. Underqualified people. The prop master has three years experience. The, uh, the, the armor Hannah, I think this was her, her, this, this may have been her first or second solo show and she's but she said she'd done seven but they were mostly with her father um she wasn't union she didn't you know she was under it's they were saving money by bringing people that were amateurs and didn't know what to do and they didn't have safety protocols in in place it's just utterly preventable i you know i think we're getting you're giving those of you that are still into the uh, you know the the conspiracy that you know so somebody wanted her dead or somebody wanted to frame Alec Baldwin or somebody wanted to do this. I mean, even I was in that camp at the beginning. I thought, okay, there's, there, there's probably a tryst with her, with, with uh, Sarah here and uh, David Halls, who was their immediate boss uh, because they they're doing their best to throw Hannah under the, under the bus. Something they didn't like her. They, uh, you know, they were, they wanted to get her on some safety violation. So I thought, well, maybe they, you yeah, know, maybe they, they just kind of scattered some of these ranks. Cause you're never supposed to point a gun at anybody, whether it has a real bullet in it or not. Uh, so I thought they said, well, we'll just kind of scatter some live ammo and then, you know, they'll be pointing the gun in another direction. Like they should, when it goes off and hope people go, holy shit, that's a real bullet. And that'll cause her to get fired and they can do whatever they want. That's kind of what I thought. But as, as I've watched it, watched these interrogations go through and read the documents, I think it's, it's just, it's just negligence is just inexperience just negligence i mean ugh. so hey that's that's my take on this <laughs> I mean, of course i mean that that's going to be the first you mr upper torso says i can see hannah thinking she's messing with her I can see Hannah thinking she's messed with her career if she put up too much of a fuss and stop and stop dangerous stuff well she told them in the osha report she said someone's going to get this is how people get hurt you tell me not to do my job uh, but, you know, then she has to follow the orders. Otherwise she's just fired. But you know, it's, uh, yeah. Okay. Can you say incompetent? Yeah, totally. It's, it's negligence, incompetence, inexperience, amateurish, and it, it's not being supervised by the higher ups in the food chain. Ugh. Yeah. So that's, uh, it, it, I mean, I'm actually more disgusted by that than if it was some grand conspiracy. You know, if it was, if there was some grand conspiracy to, for, you know, for whatever, to accomplish whatever, for whatever reason, at least that would mean these, there were people were smart and they would have to circumvent the, 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 the protocols and things in place to, to, you know, sneak this in and to pull this off. But I'm more frustrated now than before, because this is just literally every single person that seemed to be involved in this is a complete incompetent idiot. Oh, the victims are already suing. Uh, maybe you know, next week or the week after, we'll get into the lawsuits. Uh, I've got some lawsuits locked and loaded. Uh, yeah, the, the, the family, the family already sued. Um, but let's get let's uh, let's wrap this video up because we got another one with uh, Dean Winchester from Supernatural. Cool. Oh no, they're not going to finish the movie. And the movie's you, dead. You as a, a manager and assistant, do you guys um, need to be an armored specialist? Or certified. Um, you just have to be trained and on a license. Okay. So it'd be safe to assume you're under Hannah's license. I'm under Seth Kenny's Seth because Kenny's. he he's an armor uh, and he's also a supplier. Okay. Hannah doesn't have a license. She doesn't um, need one. She doesn't have one. If we needed to contact you uh, for uh, Billy Ray or Seth Kenny's phone numbers, 
would that be something you'd be willing to yeah. to give us? Okay. Yeah. Um, prior to today, has anything? I mean, you guys are obviously dealing with multiple dummies or cartridges. Mm -hmm. Did anything like that happen prior to today? There <clears throat> were just a couple misfires one day mm -hmm. with blanks and but they they don't project anything okay it. it was it's more of a spark okay overall and that's it and how did that happen so one of them was actually by me okay um and that time i was loading uh the blanks in and the hammer slipped from my hand but okay. it was pointed at the ground right. and so one of the blanks went off okay. and then the second time a uh stuntman he had one of the rifles and before we were actually rolling camera, okay she's being she honest about that the trigger and that went off because she wasn't around anyone i actually expected her to not mention her own misfire I, I i actually thought she wouldn't do that but kudos to her she she told the police about her own uh, misfire okay. you've been on set have you noticed any uh What's the demeanor of everyone? I mean, mostly everyone has been great. Um, no. I, like they're 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 her the the. No, hey, hang on. Uh, you to answer both Georgina and Yamaha Biker here. Um, the one that she misfired was not the same type of of pistol that Alec Baldwin had. And it was there. There was only two uh, that were the same as there, there was only two guns on set that were the same as Alec, Alec Baldwin's, and then Jensen Ackles. And I, I think he's probably going to talk about that in the next video. I'd hope. But the one she misfired, um, there's no indication what it was. It just may very well have been one where the hammer could just fall on the uh, on the on, on on the rounds. We don't know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So the 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 one the ones with the uh, with the locks at the uh, at one quarter and one half cock that that was not this type of gun that she that she fucked around with um and again just some of you are saying the same thing this to me just seems nothing more than a play stupid games win stupid prizes situation there are a few individuals that can get pretty grouchy but we also work 12 hour days every day so i can understand yeah <laughs> but yeah for the most part everyone how was the good. demeanor today um on set was, when this occurred honestly it felt normal okay. it didn't feel any different no one was fighting mm -mm. No. Okay. what do you think happened mm. favorite past um, question i personally think that you know i think maybe hannah might have messed up because when she was checking um the uh dummies and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to only do one at a time put it in another hand because if you rattle it with two you won't know which one is rattling and i think that's what happened is she might have had two in one hand and she rattled and thought that the one she was looking at rattled okay um and so i think when i don't know how alec was holding it or what he was doing but i think he might have just been playing with it or testing it or something and i think it just was aimed at the wrong direction that's pretty much what happened <laughs> he's dicking around with it and he blasted someone I got nothing else. That is correct. No. Nothing that I could Did do. anyone else handle the uh, the cartridges? Um, when Miss Hannah removed them from the revolver, she put them in her hand. She gave you one. Did anyone else touch them? Not that I'm aware of. Did Dave touch them? Mm, Dave touched I, her. Would it, I don't know. Okay. So... When she touched them, she was checking them at that point and rattling them? Yeah. Okay. Did you rattle them? I didn't rattle them. Okay. She, she rattled them in front of me. Okay. 
and then she gave you the one that was fired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you notice any notice anything with your experience? Was that cartridge or that casing any different than the other ones? Other tell me about that. The primer on the back was silver rather than gold. Okay. And most of the time, from just like what I've seen is when it has silver, it's it's had it, you know, it has something in it. Okay. So the one that was uh, fired, the projectile, had a silver uh, uh, backing and the other ones were gold? Yeah. Okay. So that's something to look for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, it should still be on the cart and you might see a, a few more in that box that I checked. So uh, when you checked the box, you saw gold and silver in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else? Uh, Kenny and Billy, do they make their own? No, they blanks they get things? it from a manufacturer of some sort. I don't know who. Okay, but they're the ones that supplied them to her. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They just distribute. They don't create them. And they live here in Albuquerque. So? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does Hannah get along with Alec? Yeah, I mean, they've had great interactions. She never mentioned ill regard to them? No. The directors, her bosses? No, she's, she's, mm. had, she's had pretty good relationships with everyone. Okay. Cool. I don't have anything else. If something does come up, I always have your phone number here, so I'll just contact you if I have any other questions, okay? Okay, and you wrote it down correctly, I just want to make sure. Oh uh, yeah, I'll repeat it to you, okay? 505-264? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Dang, we, did, we didn't get Sarah's <laughs> Thank number. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, there we well, go. Well, that's what Sarah had to say for herself on set. Maybe you were interested. Maybe you weren't. <laughs> Sorry, drip drop. We're not going to listen to you there. Um, well, so, all right. That is the initial questioning of Sarah Zachary immediately after the shooting happened. Um, I mean, it wasn't a detailed questioning. That was, that was just on site by the, the first place there just to try to get a, a general crime scene question investigation to see who they need to talk to later. Um, so I, I didn't expect them to be stellar and, you know, Kojak or Columbo with their, with their questioning. I mean, they were doing, they, eh, they did okay with the, with the initial questions. They've got a lot of people right there on scene to get to before, uh, you know, people, people's memory starts to fade or they start being able to tell, to, uh, to, to coordinate their stories. Um, my takeaway again from this is it's all just an incompetent, negligent crap show from the beginning. Uh, and it, it doesn't change. If, if I recall correctly, what I said was I think Alec Baldwin should be charged with uh, whatever the New Jersey law is regarding negligent manslaughter uh, or negligent homicide, whatever you could be negligent homicide. Um I think I, 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 there's just no question he whether he will or not. I don't know. I, I think I said last time it was about sixty percent sure that he would be charged. Um, I'm sticking with that. I'm sixty percent that Alec Baldwin will be charged with uh, some sort of negligent manslaughter. <sighs> Sarah, I'm thinking. Uh, possibly, but likely not. She was just kind of the idiot walking around doing dumb shit. David Halls, I think, is a very, very good candidate for a full-on prosecution. Um, the other people, Seth, I don't know, he's kind of an idiot, but if they can, if they can get him on anything. But as far as Hannah goes, I do not think she will be charged. I firmly stand by that, and I'm calling it. I would, I would. I would say I would I will put money on it, but I would become very close to putting money on it that Hannah will not be charged. Why? She knows a lot of information. She's already given you know her her statements. She's already said that she was told not to do her job. She was prevented from doing her job. She was 
yelled at for doing her job. She she told, warned them that it, you know she had to do her job or, or people would get hurt. I think they're going to say, still, no matter all of this stuff, you were negligent, but you know what everybody told you not to do. You know all of the information, all of the things that the that the other people did to uh, create this negligent situation. I think Hannah is going to flip and be the star, the prosecution star witness for any charges that are brought. That's my bet. I mean, should she be charged and found guilty? She very well could be, and I think there's way more than enough evidence to convict her. But I think that uh, I think that she's going to be the, the prosecution star witness. They're going to say, they're going to give her immunity. They're going to say no prosecution if you cooperate and if you're the witness for the prosecution, and she's going to do it. That's that's my thing, and I'm calling it. Uh, will, will Alec Baldwin ever serve a day in jail? No. I, of course not. He's Alec Baldwin. I think would, you'd, get pro, you'd, you'd get probation, whatever. 60% positive, 60% that he's going to get charged. So it could go either way at this point, but we'll see how that goes after the Jensen Ackles thing. Um, again, we're going to, we're going to go to uh, Jensen Ackles here in just a minute. Uh, make sure I don't have, see if I got all the, uh, got all the super chats, got all the super chats. Yes. I haven't missed any super chats. Um, there are three comments that kind of caught my, my my attention here just recently. Uh, they, talking about throwing the bullets away, they should have dug them out of the garbage or wherever she threw them. Did law enforcement drop the ball by not searching and finding? Well, they weren't. They didn't know they were thrown away at that point. Uh, they, they they didn't know how many rounds were on set. They didn't know they were supposed to be looking for anything uh, because she told them that she had thrown them away later, you know, days later when she was brought in when when they asked her to come in for questioning uh, at the at the sheriff station. So yeah, at that point they just didn't know there were rounds in the garbage. Uh, so eh, you know, nobody's perfect, but yeah. this is so sketchy again. Eh, I don't think it's sketchy. I think it's just freaking incompetence. It's just absolutely pure avoidable incompetence. And Robert makes a very important point: there is no such thing as a prop gun or a prop ammo. There are guns and ammo that. <laughs> Even, you know, they are all boobs, says Flux. Thank you very much, Flux. Uh, <laughs> not sure what... <laughs> uh, if you're talking about, you know, the the rube, idiot, kind of dumb sort of boobs, or if you're talking about tits, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <sighs> yeah, they're big boobs. Total idiots. <laughs> mm, well, that's where we're standing now. Um, we've got a, what's the, uh, the Jensen Ackles interview is one hour and 48 minutes. So we're, we're still on time. All righty. We're, we're going to do good here. I think, um, now again, I didn't, I didn't even know he was involved in this movie until very, very recently. Um, and I certainly didn't know he was in any position to know what had happened during the shooting, but he was, and the, the police, I think he's the second longest interview other than uh, Sarah the first time around. I mean, the second time around it was the first time we watched it. Uh, so it'll be, and he has, okay, there, there's some interesting points here, I think, that we need to look for when watching the the Jensen Eccles. I mean, you, you know, women, you can do your, ooh, Dean Winchester thing. Uh, <laughs> but all right. I'm, I think one of the things, some of the things we need to look for, was he there in the room when it happened? And if not, how did he know about it? And he has one of the two type. He has one of the two guns of the same kind that Alec Baldwin had. He had one, and Jensen had one. And so I want to see what he knew and what training he got regarding that. Um, so I think those are the things to look for to see what he knew about the gun and and uh, see how that compares with what Alec said. But I I don't have the uh, I don't have the, the the Nick interim interlude bathroom song so we're just gonna let this play <laughs> and i'll be right back let me i'm i'm not gonna boomer this i'm gonna bring it up hang on and today i present to you one of the main lead actors from the movie rust that will
Now, now he's he's gonna he's gonna call Jensen Ackles like a, a B grade actor, and he's gonna kind of throw some shade here at Jensen. But uh, apparently, if you go over through and read his comments, uh, his commenters took him to task for that. And then he goes, "Oh, it's it's the guy from Supernatural." Uh, so he changed his story and said Jensen is the best actor that's ever walked on the face of the earth. So all right, back Never in the flash. Never be released. This guy is a B rated Hollywood actor who starred in Dawson's Creek. Smallville played the voice of Batman on a cartoon series and he's going to be a lead cowboy in Rust. He's done some big things in Hollywood and now he finds himself in a New Mexico interrogation room chatting it up with detectives and we're going to get to hear what he has to say for himself. If you're not familiar with this case, a very quick recap. Alec Baldwin fired a gun on set and it killed the movie director and it injured another person, the assistant director. It's a big murder mystery, who done it? I've got a lot of interrogations related to this interrogation series on Crime Circus. Hannah, Alec, Seth, whole bunch of people. And I'll continue this series right here in Crime Circus Cult, if you're interested. If you want me to scrap it, I'll get other interrogations. But I just thought this was a murder mystery that maybe we could solve together. Now let's jump right into this and see what this B-rated Hollywood actor has to say for himself. Hey everybody, welcome back. All right, I just need to. Uh... <laughs> All right, are we ready for this? All right, I I need to become famous like rackets, you know. <laughs> I I need to. Yeah, I know. Uh, no 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 sense going back. It was just uh, listening to him talk. I tried to get back before he came in, but I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I need. I need to, I need to be, I need like Rick money. I need some, not some Nick, Rick. I need some Nick money. I need some Mercada money so I can pay a band to make a song about me going to the bathroom. All right. <laughs> Are we right? I know the video wasn't showing. Uh, I tried, I just didn't think you wanted to, wanted to watch him. So I just kind of left the audio on and I tried to make it back before he entered the studio. I mean, entered the interrogation room, but I missed it by what? 12 seconds. So, eh, good enough. I tried. <laughs> yes, I yes, I washed my hands. <sighs> All right. Let's bring up the oldie video here. Do do do. Here we go. Um, I've gone back to the the beginning of them entering the room. And do -do 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 -do. boom, share. All right. Hollywood movie star interrogations. Jensen Ackles, police interview in New Mexico. <laughs> it's only for the blind. Alrighty. And uh, I guess this is as good a place as any to do our, our midstream grift. Hit the like button, everybody. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, 300 and, well, we've got 456 people here right now and 266 likes. Half of you haven't done your job. Get down there, hit the like button. Uh, just we can double that likes in, in an instant. Just uh, go down there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. That would be a deeply, deeply appreciated move. And uh, join the memberships if that's how you're inclined. Hit the notification button, and we will see you on the other side. Remember, if there's something you definitely want me to address, uh, Super chats are the way to do it. The bright colors attract my attention and I read it and I say thank you very much. Um, otherwise, I just try to make the try to try to do my best with following the chat. Jensen Ackles, Dean Winchester. Go. Morning. Hi. Uh, you know, so. We're all back to All right. All right. <laughs> this is 
th this is body cam footage here. They they have cameras. They they have cameras installed in the room. Uh, they uh, they're not using them. Damn it. Now again, people, do if you've seen this, do not spoil it. We want to watch this here all together for the first time. No spoilers, please. Hey. You got my booster. Either. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I guess all you guys got to get that done. Yeah. Did you just fly in this morning? Literally, landed about forty-five minutes ago. Nice. Yeah. Did you fly into uh, Santa Fe. Did you like that runway? I mean, I've. I've, I've floated some pretty sketchy runaways all yeah. the time. That was fine. Actually, coming here for the film, I was flying uh, from the Yeah. And the only way to get here. Ember Fox asks, who are these people? Uh, these people are the sheriff's department that are interrogating actor Jensen Ackles, who you may know as Dean Winchester from Supernatural or uh, what's his head from Dawson's Creek. Uh, Yep, that's who they are. And uh, this, this this police and in, this police interrogator, the sheriff's in test. I think I think her name is Alex. Uh, she's a very very good questioner, very good interrogator. She she kind of does the Columbo thing where she seems like she doesn't really know what she's doing, and then she starts asking the really really incisive questions. Uh, so let's let's see how we uh, let's see how we do. It was the like. Drive to Montrose, Montrose to Denver, Denver to Albuquerque, drive to, and I was like, hang on, hang on. I was like, I'm sure there's some old cowboy that's got a plane that can just fly me over. <laughs> so I did, they found this like little little company and I flew in this like single prop literally next to the guy, like with the <laughs> nice <laughs> all the way over and we landed. It was pretty, it was pretty sketchy coming in on that one, but uh, that was fun. Yeah, I have uh, flown in once into the Santa Fe airport, and I really like never again. What's like, wrong with it? It's fine. I know it wasn't fine. But I have a slight fear of flying. Okay, so. my, my wife is, is like that too. Like she's like she's not a big drinker, but if she's gonna fly, she's like I need shots. Just get on the plane. Well, yeah, I I just feel like I, when yeah, I no level, I was like this runway is like not level. And, it just seemed like a mess to me. I remember I was flying into Atlanta one, one time. And it, it was for an event that they had chartered a plane for. So it was, a, it was a jet. It was a small jet. And the wind shear was so crazy that we were literally coming in like sideways. Oh, I've and had that happen too. And then at the last. Oh, I like the like, awkward no. small talk. When it came around and tried it again. So the second time it was just like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the brace yourself. Was, that was pretty sketchy. That's how the on Friday it was so windy out here. Um, our like gas station pumps are kind of at airport. Yeah. And that's how all the things are coming in. They're coming in. Just coming in sideways. Yeah. Like, so sketchy. That's New Mexico weather. Yeah. When well, you get this, you got some big crosswinds here too. Yeah. Like open plains, right? Especially now. Not a lot of trees. Um, oh, good. So, let me just start with what you were. Do you can spell your first name for me? J E N S E N. <clears throat> last name? Ackles, A C K L E S. Thank God they went to the. Oh, God, they're back to this again. 78. Which probably makes me the oldest in this room. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm born in March, too. Also, Pisces. Pisces? Yeah, heck yeah. Oh, God. That guy's, that guy's hot people. for yeah. Jensen. He's hot for Dean. He wants some of the so Jimmy Dean sausage. <laughs> Two sides to you, huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So what is your role or your title as far as this production goes? Uh, one of the lead actors. Okay. Actor. Any other no. secondary type things that you do? Nope. <laughs> I get paid, yeah. I act, I go home. So producer as well? Nope. And I mean, I don't know, I'm sure you guys know this, but like the producer thing often, I, I, don't, I don't know as far as Alec goes, but you know, in this industry, don't give kind of these ancillary titles to, uh, you know, that's almost like a vanity thing, yeah. you know, to an actor, just to like sweeten the deal so they'll sign on to become like, I I, I know that I, um, I wasn't offered a producer credit, but I was offered some producer points, which is kind of like a back end kind of thing, but it was just, it's like to sweeten the deal to, to get people to sign on to do it. Well, that uh, sucks. I'm sorry you don't get your profits. 
yeah, like that, like they would offer that kind of a thing in order to get a big actor to come on. But there's zero producing uh, Call responsibility Castillo. in that regard. So, okay, I, I, I'm not, I did not have that title at all. But even if I did, I would have zero producing responsibilities. responsibilities. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's just start with uh, the day of the incident. Were you there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Can you kind of go through the day? Okay, that's something interesting too. Uh, Travis Fimmel was also part of it. He was also part of this movie. So I wonder if they're going to get him interviewing in, 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 for interrogation. For those of you who don't know who Travis Fimmel is, he's also known as Ragnar Lothbrook in uh, Vikings. He was part of this show as well. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Exegation, thank you so much. That is awesome. Thank you so much for the super chat. That is Soldier Boy, Homelander's son, Jeff. I haven't seen Homelander, you know? Uh, <laughs> But and another thing that I think is be really, really interesting with this here is that because he spent so much time on you know Dawson's Creek and so and way more time on on Supernatural, he's very, very, very familiar with firearms. He has to be familiar with firearms. Alec Baldwin said, "Oh, I've, I." Alec Baldwin said some dumb shit during his interrogation. He did a lot of the, well, I know all about the different kinds of bullets. I know about the different kinds of guns. I've been doing this for 40 years. And then at the same time, he's saying, well, I don't know anything about acting. I don't know anything about these things. I don't, you know, and so he was giving these, these duplicitous answers where when it was time for him to know all about guns and seem smart, he did. And when he wanted to deflect, oh, I don't know, what are these weird things that go bang, bang, bang? I don't know. But. I want to see, uh, and you know, he didn't want the training. He didn't need the training. Uh, he, they were told him not to give him the training. Uh, so I want to see how how someone with as much firearms experience as I know that Jensen Ackles has, how did he respond? What was his training? What was his personal security protocols? Particularly because he had exactly the same type of gun as Alec Baldwin had in the situation. So I want to I want to know what his personal safety protocols are and how things were handled with him and see if he was a dick like Alec Baldwin was. Let's see. Um, it was a normal day. I, I probably uh, okay. Another thing they they're starting to question him. They haven't read him his rights. He is not a suspect at this point. This is just an interview. Uh, he's you know, they they're not treating him as a suspect. Nothing he says can or will be used against him in a court of law in this deal. But if he does screw up and somehow would admits or. Uh, says something incriminating they can investigate they can either start questioning right then as a suspect or they can bring him back again and do another round of questioning after reading him his rights uh should he have a lawyer here with him yes in an ideal world and he should know better than that even if it's just an invest you know but uh, even then does he have the right to have a lawyer with him there in the room if he's not being treated as a suspect that gets into into a whole bunch of things that we don't really need to get into. He doesn't have a lawyer here. It would probably be smart to have one if he's allowed to have one, et cetera, et cetera. But he is not being treated as a suspect here. I have to look at the, <clears throat> at the, um, the day out of days, which is the, essentially the schedule for the actors when what days they're working, what days they're off. Um, but I'd probably say to say that I was, I, I had worked more than the other actor that, up to that point. Uh, my storyline had, had was kind of the heavy focus of the first part of the filming. Um, Alex's story was uh, we were they were about to get into his stuff and was was going to be shooting with him primarily for the next two weeks, and I was almost done with the film. I think I had like three or four days left. So uh, up to that point, I had been on set almost, you know, the the full time that they were filming. I think I made may have had a day or two off. Um, and uh, we had gotten into shootouts and stuff prior to this. <laughs> Let me get conflicted. You just get a bunch of grunts. No, what I'm saying is that he, he's he's rich. He can afford to have a lawyer here with him. But if he was not being interrogated and he he needed a court appointed lawyer, he wouldn't necessarily have the right to one here because he's not, he hasn't been read his rights and uh, he hasn't been given the opportunity to have a court appointed lawyer. He's a but on his own dime, yeah, he can afford to bring one here. I just didn't want to waste a minute explaining that. <laughs> so let's get going. So you Sorry know, about the grunt. I, I handled the gun almost uh, well every day. I mean, it was part of my costume. Mm-hmm. Um, they would hand me a gun in the morning. I would check it. I would do my own checks. 
just because I've, I've been in the industry for 25 years. I've had a lot of onset and offset training for uh, firearms. Right there. Right there is the difference. He said, I've been doing this acting shit for 25 years. I have had lots of onset, offset training. I do it myself. I make sure my shit is secure. Alec on the, I've been doing this 40 years, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, he, he doesn't want the training, doesn't need, he refuses it. There you go. There you go. This is the big difference between him and Alec Baldwin. This is a responsible guy. I like him already in the spot. Good answers, good protocol. It doesn't matter. I mean, how it should be in a, in a normal situation. Hannah, the armorer, takes the gun, loads it, hands it off to whoever is there. They take it from her. They check it to make sure it's checked. Or, you know, or, you know Hannah shows them, say, look here, here it is. And then the person takes it. The person should still double check it. Then whoever they, you know, say she gives it to David Halls. And when David Halls, before David Halls gives it to Alec Baldwin, he should show him what type each one, each and every single round in that pistol, what it is. And then Alec Baldwin should take it and do his own damn check. Because at the end of the day, someone hands you a gun. And you're just going to believe that everybody did their due diligence? You're just going to, okay, well, someone said it was good, so I'm just going to start pointing at freaking people and pulling the damn trigger. Yeah, that's not the thing you want to do. Do not trust anyone's opinion when they give you a piece of equipment that can very easily kill someone. So my my quick check is if they hand it to me, they show me mm. all of the the dummy rounds yep. in the uh, in the wheel, and then I just take it. And armorers hate this, but I just dry fire it into the ground six times. J Jensen, I love check. you. They're like, oh, don't do that, Jensen. I love you. That is the ultimate fucking check right there. I'm sorry, I'm swearing too early. Um, That is the ultimate check right there. This guy has his shit together right there. Not only does he check it himself, not only does he watch someone check it, he's like, I don't care if you like this or not. Click, 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 click into the dirt. Well, there you go. Now you know that none of those rounds are live. Jensen knows what he's doing, and I, I I like him now more than I did before, and I actually quite liked him in Supernatural. Uh, yep, that's a that's a smart guy. That's a guy who takes safety ridiculously seriously, which every single person should. All right, now I have an now I have a new favorite Hollywood actor. Uh, those of you who want to hear it again, yep. Uh, Byron. So my my quick check is if they hand it to me, they show me all of the the dummy rounds in the uh, in the wheel, and then I just take it. And armorers hate this, but I just dry fire it into the ground six times. Okay. That's my own personal check. They're like, "Oh, don't do that. It's going to hurt the firing pin." I'm like, well, "So what?" Yeah, yeah. I oh, want to know that. It, it, I'm sorry. Just pause it and say, "Yeah, I don't give a." If it, if it damages the firing pin, it doesn't damage her head. It doesn't damage his torso. It doesn't damage. You know, yeah. You can replace a firing pin. And if it's. Yeah. yeah. Good on you, Jensen. You rock. You rock. And that's just his personal check. And if they don't like it, they can find a new actor. Good for you, man. In the wheel. And then I just take it and armorers hate this, but I just dry fire it into the ground six times. Okay. That's my own personal check. They're like, oh, don't do that. It's going to hurt the firing pin. I'm like, so what? Yep. I want to know that all of these are actual gun. Not that I would ever think that a live round would be in a gun on a set. There's, there's just not a world in which a live round should ever be on a set, period. Which is why this is so, uh, it's so like crazy to me to, to comprehend how. That's, I mean, that's the big, that's all I want to know. I'm, I could walk into all the safety protocols, everything that I, I saw, everything that I went through. Uh, the, the only question I had, it's not like, oh, how did Dave miss this? Or how did Hannah not get, it's how did a live round end up on a set? Multiple rounds end up on a, on a film set. It's just, there's not a world in which that should happen. But the thing is, the problem is, is if you look at, 
you look at a dummy round, it's made to look like a live round. Mm -hmm. You look at a blank, it's crimped, has no tip. It clearly looks like a blank, but that is a charge in it. So you're looking for a, a, a clay tip that is to look like a lead tip or a crimped tip, which is a charge bullet or not a bullet, sorry, a charge round. Um, this is a dude who just knows I his shit the gun and, and lives by it. Six clay tips, then I can just assume that they're all dummies because that's all that should ever be on a set. If I see a crimp tip, then I'm like, whoa, whoa, we got a hot gun here. Like that's yeah. there's a blank in there. Get that out of there. Um, which is okay. What? Another okay. Here we here's another interesting thing is Alec Baldwin said repeatedly in every single stupid interview he's done relating this, whether it was on TV or on Cuomo's stupid podcast or during his police interrogation, he always said, they gave me this and told me it was a cold gun. And he said to him, the cold gun means it's safe. It's safe to shoot. It's good to go. Jensen just contradicted Alec Baldwin, where he's using the term hot gun, not as as you know, one that uh, is live, has live ammo or something in it, he's using it as saying any gun that goes bang, even something with a dummy round in it, I mean, with a blank round in it, is considered a hot gun and should not be there unless under very, very certain situations. Um, it, you know, Georgina asked me to, to explain the bullets. I think Jensen did, did, did a good job. I mean, basically clay tips, nothing inside. They either have holes drilled in the side or they just have a couple of BBs so you can rattle them and go, okay, there's no charge in here. There's no powder in here. It's just for decoration to look like a live round. Then there's the blank rounds, which is they used to have, they used to look like shotgun shells sort of based on the end where you'd have like a cover and, a, and like a, a bit of wadding and then either a, you know, an eighth quarter, half or full charge of powder, depending on how loud you wanted it to be. Uh, and then you would pull the trigger, but the, 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 uh, you know, the, the, the little padding on the end on the end would actually, you know, the cap would come out because it has to, uh, but they stopped using those just about the time that uh, Brandon Lee got killed because of that. Uh, so then they start going to the crimped ends where they just take the, they just take a regular bullet, stuff it full of however much powder they need. And then they just close off the end. You know, so like, you know, like, so it looks like a, like a star from the end and then it goes bang and just opens up and that's it. Uh, but you still have some gas pressure coming out. Those are kind of the basic, you got the blank rounds, the dummy rounds and the real rounds. <laughs> and you He's saying that if you have a dummy round, I mean, a blank round that goes bang, that's considered a hot bullet, uh, you know, a hot, a hot weapon. And, you know, get the fuck out of here. Where Alec was saying, no, nope, someone told me it was cold. That means it's perfectly safe to fire. Mm. Yep. Oh, okay. Not a gun person. How can you tell while the cartridge is in the chamber? You tell before it's in the chamber. That's what the armorer does. Checks every single bullet individually before it goes in. And that's what every single person who touches that gun should do between the armorer and the person who's actually going to be using it. So it, you know, if it goes through three different people, three different people should check each bullet individually. Uh, yeah, so you check it before it goes into the chamber. And if you get the gun, you take it out of the chamber and look at it. That's just basic safety. Uh, Execution, thank you again so much for the other super chat. Deeply appreciated. Cuomo is British slang for a cigarette. Look it up. Eh, yeah, all right, next. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I just, I, I feel for Dave because I feel like he could have looked at it, given it a visual inspection, and, so, and saw six clay tips and not known that one was a lead tip mm -hmm. with a charge in it. Show um, a little sympathy for Dave. But again, so there was clearly safety protocol that was that was skipped or missed because it should have been caught. Every round that's loaded into a gun is should be inspected and can be inspected. Um, anyway, kind of went off on a tangent there. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't know. Tell me if you get like you know if you need me to like move on or something. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm I haven't really talked about this since it happened. Okay. So I'm kind of going through this too. I mean, I've, I've tried to talk to my wife about it, but she's, it kind of freaks her out. Yeah. And she gets pretty uh, anxious about it. And she's like, I can't, I can't 
she, you know, she's like, if I'm watching the news, she's like, please turn that off, please turn that off. Right, it's a traumatic situation. It is uh, for us that were there, and for people that were that are, you know, in proximity. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm. that day, that particular day, morning went uh, per usual. Um, we were uh, we were shooting up at the church. Uh, actually, we shot some other stuff. Uh, oh, so he was there, like the very, of. very near when it happened. We had a slight delay in the morning, in fact, so much so that we got loaded up into a van at base camp and we're headed to set. And they said, and they turned the van around. They were like, wait, we're not ready for you. Turn, like everybody go back to base camp, to the cast. And I heard that on the radio. I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's, that's weird. Like if uh -oh, Dean maybe swears. you had a camera, uh, a lens issue or, or the light wasn't right, but at least bring us up there. It's not gonna be, a, it's gonna be a 10 minute fix, whatever it is. <laughs> Little did I know that it was the camera crew that was walking because they weren't, they weren't, uh, I mean, this is, this is what I heard that morning from the producers. Uh, cause I went in and I was like, yo, what's happening. They were shooting up in a church flux. Yeah. That it's a, it's a, a set church, you know, it's, it's old, old Western church. That's where, that's where the scene was supposed to be shot. You know. Uh, execution. Thank you so much again. These angles suck, Richard. Or I guess I was supposed to read these angles suck, Richard. Yeah, well, we're here for the audio, not necessarily the the the. <laughs> the well, may, maybe the police film crew walked off too. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, so now he's talking about the film crew walking because of, of safety and uh, other concerns. That's why they were delayed that morning. And they were like, "A camera is walking because we won't put them up." We put them up where? What do you mean? They're like, well, we're, they're set up in Albuquerque. They want to be in Santa Fe because it's a longer commute. It's less of a commute. They want they want a lesser commute. It's in the contract that they don't get that. They're still in the zone. Uh, and if we do it for them, then we have to do it for all of the departments. And we don't have that in the budget. It's a small budget movie. movie. Uh, so they, they threatened to walk, and they walked. I was like, well, when did they threaten to walk? They were like, this morning. They waited until like one of our busiest days and we have a big giant shootout. Yeah. They knew we were just coming off a two-day break. They could have said it, they could have done it like two days prior, given them, given production two days to find replacements. Mm -hmm. So they did. They were smart in their negotiating and they showed up that morning with their equipment. They were like, so are you gonna put us up? And production was like, no, we told you no. And they're like, okay, bye. And that's why they were like, uh, send cast back to base camp. We don't have a camera crew right now. We got to figure some shit out. So we went back and, and we got like, a, it was a two hour late head start that day, which was, you know, we moved pretty quick, uh, especially for a, a low budget film like those, those tend to be high pace. Um, so uh, once uh, B cam, uh, Reed, who was uh, Helena's uh, guy from LA, um, he wasn't going to leave her, so he he stayed. And, and again, th this shows you. I, this is totally just you know, me. This shows you the big difference between another big difference between Jensen and Alec. Every interview that Alec Baldwin has done, including Cuomo's, he never called her. I think he he called her Helena like maybe one or two times. It's always that uh 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 the camera woman he, he alec baldwin barely knows her damn name where he's just he's that her name is just flowing off of his lips good for you for knowing people's names jensen even though most people would have probably left in solitude or solidarity with their the rest of their camera crew but so we've got a cam b cam uh, b cam is usually a guy that can also double with steady cam so a cam is more studio mode does this make sense to you guys uh they left. He even talks he like he knows more about film than Alec Baldwin um, does. The focus puller didn't. He left as well. So we lost like six out of the eight camera people. And then you were seven. I don't know, I forget. But Reed stayed, who's an operator. So finally, they, they, they wrangled some focus puller to come in uh, that more like immediately. And we were able to continue the day with one camera. And um, so we started first couple shots of me riding into town on a horse popping off, establishing shots, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we, uh, and then we moved up to the church later in the, later in the morning. And, um, 
the first uh, the first few shots inside were facing me, so it was over uh, Alec to me and my kind of deputy coming into the church, guns drawn, saying, you know, stand up slowly, drop your weapons, that kind of thing. Um, and then he basically slowly takes his gun out, thinking that he's going to, you know, drop the weapon. And then he draws back on the hammer, jumps up, starts shooting at me. That's the scene. So we shot my cover. Oh, wow. Alec Baldwin, I guess, in the film was supposed to be shooting at Jensen. Wow. I, okay. Learning more about the film as we go. Bridge um, over him to me, uh, both wide and both tight. And then we uh, sort of turned around, broke to lunch. So we went to lunch, came back for shot. The first uh, camera shot back was an, kind of a, a close insert of Alec pulling the gun out. And so I was standing not immediately on set because they were just setting this particular shot up. Didn't, it didn't necessarily include me, but I would have been coming in for off camera dialogue. Okay. Uh, I was not on camera, but I would have been off camera for the, you know, telling him to put his guns down, that whole thing, which he probably didn't need me to do that, but that's just, you know, what we do. Um, so I was standing just outside the church, uh, right off the porch there, when the gun went off. Uh, and again, they were just setting up a shot of him pulling out the, the, the gun and, showing Elena, you know, she was very, she was very kind of involved in every shot. Um, you know, this is, uh, I'm used to kind of directors being a little bit more of like, okay, I want to see this. I want to see this. But Joel was more of like, this is the scene. Elena, how are we going to shoot it? And so she was really, for all intents and purposes, she was the meaning of director of photography. She mm -hmm. was directing all of the camera shots and she was very, very, passionate and, and amazing at it. Um, but she would get right in there. Um, she would even like move me, like finding the light and stuff just, just right. So she was very, very hands-on. Some people don't do that. A lot of people don't do that. They'll just sit in their, you know, chair it behind the monitor okay. or just be like, you know, on the radio telling people to do things. But she was very hands-on. So she was standing right there next to Reed and looking at the, the monitor, uh, like on the, on the camera. Um, asking Alec to show her what, you know, show me your action. So he was just showing her the action and then it, and then it went off. I don't know if he was just drawing back on the hammer and his thumb slipped and that was enough of a spring to, to get no. forward and hit that primer or what. Nope. Um, I'm sure he's told you. Nope. 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 Um, Jansen. No. And, uh, and so I heard the, sh the I heard the, the, the shot go off. There shouldn't have been uh, any shot go off because a, it was set up. There was no. There was no cameras rolling. Rolling. Uh, there was. There wasn't uh, supposed to be around uh, a blank to be shot in that particular camera sequence. Um, and nobody yelled hot gun. So when it went off, I just it just sounded different. I mean, a, a, a real round sounds different than a blank. Um, and I didn't immediately think that it was. I just was like what the fuck was that? And uh, so I spun into the church. I saw Joel down screaming. I saw Elena seated and I could see she was, her back was to me, but I could see the, the blood pooling on her, on her khaki jacket. Oh God. And so I just started yelling medic. Um, oh man. And, uh, yeah. And then, then that was about it. Then I just, I stood back. I was, kick myself for not running in there and doing something, but I don't know what I would have done. No, I mean, you know, the medics are trained professionals and there was an onset medic, so I mean. There was, and that's why I was screaming for him. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that, say uh, it in double capital letters, doesn't matter, it was Alec Baldwin's fault. Of, at first I was like, oh, somebody, you know, a, a shot went off. But there's no way that that would have caused that much damage. Like how did, how were two people down and there's that much blood? With a movie around. Um, so I was just instantly like, like what? And then as it started to settle, I, and that that's an interesting thing, right there, when he said, you know, like a movie round. You know, even if it was a live movie round, you know, it, it, movie round, it there shouldn't have been that much blood. 
that's that's an interesting thing to say. Uh, and I, I know we have uh, some some uh, former servicemen and service women here in the chat. Um, I know you, we we have some first responders and some nurses as well in the in the chats. If you've ever seen a body bleed to death, the amount of blood would surprise you. I mean, when all of the blood inside your body is outside of you, there is a shit ton of blood. So you know, it's it's inter- I mean, they, it's interesting. He would he would mention that that's what he noticed that there was an extreme amount of blood. Yeah, great, great success. There, to me, there are many, many, many people at fault here. I can think of at least five people. Just just because this happens doesn't mean only one person is at fault. Uh, I can see why everybody that we've talked about, Sarah, David Hall, Seth, Alec Baldwin, David, all of them are at fault. All of them can be charged. So, yeah, to to say you know, this person did something so the other people had absolutely no responsibility whatsoever for the safety of anyone is just, I mean, not only is it wrong, it's ludicrous. But anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. I just, I was like, that was a real round. That was, I know that sound. That's a real round. Is that what it sounded? Because you made a comment about how it sounded different to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't it sound like a real round? It sounds like a 45. I have a 45. I know what they sound like. Okay. Um, did you see what happened with the gun after it was shot? No, when I stepped in there, I saw Alex sitting seated in the pew. Uh, holding just like you know, just in, in shock because it's also like a flashbang, right? I mean, that thing goes off, it's it, everybody in there was deafened and they were disoriented. I mean, uh, uh when Mamie came out, who's her school supervisor, she was stumbling out and she ended up being the one that called 911. Uh, there was another a wardrobe uh, person was in there. She came out. She was stumbling. She like hit her knees. Uh, Reed was still in there. Um, Sad. You know, there was a few people that that kind of staggered out, but it was it was disorienting. So um, I didn't go in because the the medics were yelling everybody out, everybody out, and Joel, the our director, was actually yelling. Uh, you know, get the fuck out, get out of here. So people were quickly exiting that didn't need to be there. Um, wow. So I didn't, I didn't go back in there because I knew it was, uh, uh, you know, I couldn't do anything at that point. So I just was standing back and then I started helping uh, move equipment to make way for uh, responders. Okay. Out of the church? Or... Uh, out of the way of the of the church, there was so much equipment around the, the front of the church, okay. and we knew that everybody was going to need access. So we started moving barricades, we started moving camera equipment, we started moving monitors. We started, and I just, I just, you know, threw my jacket, and my hat off, and started helping mm-hmm. grips and electrics, and everybody just started moving shit. Okay. Um, I want to back up to the beginning of the day. Okay. Um... Okay. He so in the first twenty one minutes, he's told the story once. And now I guess they're going to go back. They're they're going to do this for what, like six more times at least. Now they're going to go in for the details, and you go back for more details, and you go back for more details. Cl- hands, I mean, it's not even close. It's not even close that he's the smartest guy on the damn set that's still alive. I'm sure Helena was quite was quite brilliant as well, but clearly he's the smartest one on set so far. He's very, very knowledgeable about what he does. He's very, very knowledgeable about the situation. He understands what other people's jobs and responsibilities are. He, top-notch guy. I mean, I, I liked him as an actor, but now I really, really respect him as a as a sharp, together guy. Clearly, clearly a good guy. Um, were you guys working with any of the firearms 
on the first half of the day? <clears throat> um, I mean, like I said, we get handed our, our gun belt and our, uh, and our firearm in the morning. And it essentially stays on our person because it's a part of our costume mm -hmm. for the remainder of the day. Um, if we ever are actually shooting it, then it gets taken. They load it with round with with blanks. You know, we usually are using half loads, um, and then it's well announced that there's a live, you know, a, a hot gun, and you know how many rounds are hot at what load, what capacity, uh, so that everybody's aware. Um, but again, you know, the, there's the, the few of us that are that were in the movie. We get handed essentially a prop, you know, um, and it has dummies because I I always personally check, and I was telling some of the other guys, I'm like, always check, always check yourself. That's not why we're hired. And I was telling you this: yeah. we're actors, and if, if actors, if it was left up to the actors to be the final like uh, uh, line of of safety and defense, then I wouldn't trust 99.9 .9 people I work with, uh, percent of the people I work with. But um, again, just from from using a lot of firearms on set and also having uh, real training. Um, real training, key, key I point. I just always there. do my own personal checks. Just See, and, and again, this is the difference between his statement to the police and Alec Baldwin's statement to the police. Alec Baldwin says, it's not my responsibility. I'm just an actor. You know, I'm not the, I'm not the armor. You give me the gun, you tell me it's clean. I, you know, it's not my job. Okay, Jensen said exactly the same thing. I'm just the actor. It's not up to me. I'm not the final line, uh, but I do it anyway. That's the difference right there. Yeah, it's not my job. I'm not supposed to be the last line of, of defense against this happening, but I do my own personal check. If this goes to trial, I hope to God he's a witness as well for the prosecution because he's got way, way, way huge amounts of credibility and knowledge. <laughs> Good on him, seriously. Because it's a smart thing to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Did yes, you, it's a smart thing. Or what do. gun did you have in the morning? I had the, uh, I had the, it's 45. Uh, it's not the long cold, but it's the, um, it's the one that has U.S. Marshall. Uh, in the uh, the handle, um, I believe there are only two on set, but um, I think I, I don't know if it was, but I was told that, that was one of the ones you guys. Uh, okay, it was mine. And did you check that in the morning? I did. I always do. Yeah. Did it have anything in it? Dummies. Okay. And did you take the dummies out, or just did a visual check? I did a visual check and did a, a click into the ground. Okay. Dude is so freaking smart. And I also appreciate you walking us through that, you know, what what takes place during a film because, I mean, we're getting to know what actually takes place on film. You know, this is a major case and some people have, that we've spoken to have kind of walked walked us through the what the procedure is. So I appreciate you yeah. letting us know what exactly takes place. We're starting to learn a lot more about what goes on in there. Yeah. Shut, shut up, fanboy. So who handed you the gun in the morning? Um, that particular morning, I, I believe Sarah Props handed me my gun belt and Hannah handed me my, my gun. She, uh, she was not 100% not of the time, but most of the time the person that was handling the firearms. Uh, Sarah would help her and had a license to help her. And this is something that I learned later. I just was, you know, I was like, because I, I asked her that day, I was like, did you handle the gun? She was like, no. I was like, are you even supposed to handle the gun? She was like, yes, I'm licensed to do it. So I would help Hannah out. Um, but for, from my recollection, uh, Hannah was was handling the, the guns. Mm. 90% of the time. Okay. Um, there were times when I would hand, at lunch, we would always take our gun belts off and hand our guns back to props or, or to Hannah. Um, so I would just take my whole belt off and hand it to either Hannah or Sarah, whoever was close by. And then they would 
they would take it and lock it up and do whatever they did with it at lunch. And then I would get it back after lunch. Um, during your time mm. here during this whole production, has David ever handed you a gun? Uh, no. Or anybody else says him? No. Well, Sarah, I think as, as there were probably a couple of times where Sarah handed me um, the gun, maybe. I want to say that every morning Hannah would show me the rounds. She would go, she would uh, pull the, the, the wheel lock back, slide the wheel, then show me each round and then hand it to me. Then I would mm. put it on the ground, put it in my holster, and there it stayed until lunch. Okay. Well. All right. Okay, so here we have here we have someone who's telling the police that Hannah was doing the right thing. Hannah was handling it. Hannah was going through showing him the bullet. She he accepted Hannah's uh, instruction. He accepted Hannah's offer to to check the weapons. And then he still did his own checks, but he said that Sarah gave him the weapon a few times. Sarah, if 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 my memory serves, uh, about an hour ago in the videos we're watching said that she never handed the guns to anybody. That was always Sarah. I mean, that was always uh, Hannah. Uh, so yeah, unless my memory serves me, uh, Hannah was doing most of the time, but Sarah who said she never gave a weapon to anybody had actually done it. Uh, hmm. Um, and then did they outfit you after lunch the day of the incident? Yes. Okay. And I can't remember if I clicked into the ground that day. So I, I mean, that, I know, I know, I did that morning, but I, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out if I did my safety check after lunch, and I can't remember. And maybe that's just because it was a pretty, a pretty crazy event that happened after lunch, and, and I'm just trying to think of. There's, it's like flashes. Like I know where I was standing. Oops. I know what I saw. Who was the armpit sniffer? That was Hannah. Reason, I'm like, gosh, did I? Because I never overly thought about it. I'm like, gosh, did I check my gun when I came back from lunch? Like I normally do. I always do. But I, I can't remember doing it. Who handed you the gun after lunch? I don't know. Wow. I can't say it was certainty. Okay. And it's mm -hmm. okay if you don't know, because um, we don't want to say or you right. know, have something in mind that didn't happen. So if you. That's what I mean. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I could certainly, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I could give a percentage guess, but it was, I, I don't know for certain mm -hmm. that it was either Hannah or Sarah. It was one of those two. Wow. Okay. And what about your belts? They would have been the same person. Wow. Um, what did you do with it after the incident? Uh, I took it off and handed it to uh, Sarah. Okay. Then she went and immediately, I saw her take it immediately to the cart. Okay, so apparently one of the bullets she threw away were from this his gun. Totally Very interesting. Double-decker cart that has, you know, a variety of props on it. Do you remember the color? Uh, no. Blue. Black. Did you see her set it down? After the incident? Yeah. No, I, I I handed it to her and then I went to work moving equipment. Okay. I said, here, take this. And then she you know, she was frazzled and I saw Hannah like on her knees, like head in hand, like somebody was consoling her. Hmm. And I was like, take this, put her in the cart, and then I just started moving shit. Did you see um, what happened with the gun after it was fired? Alex's gun? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, Dave, Dave and me, I, I heard Dave yelling, where's the gun, where's the gun? Because he wanted to inspect it. And Hannah and Dave were handling it. I did, I did see that. Okay. Um, you... I mean, this is an interesting thing. I mean, this has got to be, got my... Uh... My maker's mark here. It's it's not uh, it's not an Amber Heard night, but we still want some maker's mark. It's interesting. He's one of the uh, I think he's like the only person that's ever said anything nice about Hannah, who's ever said that Hannah was doing her job and doing it well, rather than just saying, "Well, she's the armor. It stops with her." Uh, very interesting. This actually increases my 
likelihood that uh, Hannah won't be charged and she will be the main witness for the prosecution. Can you recall what they did? Uh, they were still in the church and I just remember them, Dave yelling, uh, you know, where, where's the gun? Um, let me see that. Let me see that. And then I, I don't remember anything. Wow. I don't remember what happened after that with that particular situation. Okay. Going back to Hannah. Mm -hmm. Um, so you've been working with her since the beginning of the set. Mm -hmm. Can you, or is there any other time that you witnessed that she was being unsafe and not following protocol? Um, is there anything that stuck out to you? Oh. She was, in my experience, she was saying, saying the things that, uh, you know, an armorer would, would, would and should say. Um, there were, okay. she was doing safety checks. Um, you know, there's, there's levels, I think, to the intensity of, of armorers in our industry. Um, I would say that the majority that I've worked with are like drill instructors and can scare the piss out of actors when they hand them, uh, any kind of weapon, whether, you know, whether it's supposed to be fired or not. Um, I used to not like that. Now I'm thinking that I think that's a really good thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say that there wasn't that kind of intense uh, fear that she was giving off. Um, again, like most of the ones that I work with are like very, you know, they're either military, ex-military, ex-law enforcement. They've got a, a, a long, long history of, of gun handling and gun safety and gun training. Um, mm. And they they do not care that you're a Hollywood actor or, or a name or anything like that. They are there to, to make sure that you know that this is a firearm that can hurt people and you don't point it at anybody unless you are planning to, to, to shoot them, you know, shoot, you know, aim it at a target, you know, cause there's, there's safety guidelines. And I think that's probably why I, I do things that I do with my, with my prop. Um, it's just because I've, I've been dealing with, uh, armors who are very strict and very experienced and very safe. Um, I know that, uh, you know, on, on, I was on a show for 15 years. Well, great success. Hate to burst your Alec Baldwin bubble here, but uh, is it armor? Hannah was nepotism higher. It's, um, could have been. Uh, would have been impossible for Alec to know if those bullets are blanks or real, even if he would have checked them individually. Absolutely incorrect. Uh, Hannah was the first person that uh, gave the, her, her uh, questioning that, that, uh, that gave her inter in me no speak English. She good. Try that again. Hannah was the first person interrogated by the police at the police station. Uh, and while she was there, she gave them examples of each of the types of rounds. And the next person was Alec Baldwin and Alec Baldwin. He went through and he listed all of the different ways of how he said, I know, I know that you know, this is what a blank looks like. These are the different kinds of blanks. These are the different kinds of dummy rounds. These are the different kinds of live rounds. So yeah, he, uh, he said, I know all of these things. Then the, uh, the interrogator, this lovely lady here, Alex, she brought out the different types of rounds and put them on the table. And he went through and identified each and every one of those different types of rounds. So yes, if Alec had taken the damn time to look at it, he could have told you what each and every one of those rounds were. So yeah, that argument fails because he proved that he know, he told what kind they were and then he identified them from actual specimens. Uh, yep, he knew. He just thought it wasn't his fucking responsibility. No, they told me. They told me it was a cold gun, so I, you know, I don't have to look at it. Yeah, Flux, thank you so much, Flux. It made my heart too happy that he used the phrase drill instructor. I love this dude. I would <laughs> I would legit not mind if he was one of my squad leaders. He's good. He's a good guy. I'm liking him.
He's, he's definitely a man. Uh, Ian Paler said, Ian Runkle, the two Ians, did a video where even someone who has never fired a gun can discern a dummy from a real round blindfolded. Yeah, that's that's kind of why they're designed that way, to make sure there's no possibility of mixing them up. Uh, so, yeah, you know, Alec could have done it if he would have just looked because he said it and he demonstrated that he knew the different kinds. Oh, sorry. Dang it. Ah. A lot of times I would use. Go back. I would have, I'm trying, to, trying to move these subtitles. I know that, uh, you know, on, on, I was on a show for 15 years and a lot of times I would use, I would have my gun on my person, but I wasn't actually uh, firing off uh, blanks, but I would have it and I would need to, uh, you know, rack it or, or do something in the scene. Well, the armorer, we don't necessarily need an armorer for that. Uh, props, a props on set props person is licensed to, to handle firearms, but they're not licensed to handle ammunition. Okay. That's where, that's when armor really is the specialty, the special person. They are really responsible for the ammo. The gun is a prop. The ammunition inside the gun needs a specialist. Okay. Um, and so the, the, my props person, you know, on this particular project would literally come up to me and shake every bullet in front of my face and then load it. Shake because there's BBs inside empty you know, the dummy rounds. You shake it like that, you hear the little rattle, you know that it's, oh. there's no gun pattern. There. Yep, there you go. Um, and that was on this side or a previous one? That was on a previous one. Okay. That never happened on this side. Um, that being said, I, I, I don't know what what is mandatory protocol for armorers. I just know what I've experienced. And I, I have experienced more safety measures in other on other sets than I have experienced on this particular set. But again, I didn't feel unsafe. Okay. And um, that was more, I mean, is there anything that you could point out that she did that was really like... Way to go, officer fanboy. That was like being loose or cavalier. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Um, the, the gun on set is part of the props. It's part of the property. It's the film property. It doesn't mean it's a fake gun or it's not dangerous. Saying the, saying the gun, it, it's a prop gun. That's colloquialism used in the film industry. And it's, it's part of the property department. Anyone can anyone can handle property. So, but if you're handling the things that go boom inside of the property, you need an expert. If there's an empty gun, you don't need an armorer. Uh, it's when you start putting shit in it. So th this isn't saying it's a prop. I mean, you know, it's a fake gun and it doesn't real. It's a prop. It's a it's part of the property used for the film. That's what he's saying. I just know, like me personally, I I I, I knew she was experienced i could just tell okay you know um i knew that she had she she clearly learned the lingo and knew the verbiage and and understood gun safety from from somebody teaching her that um but she was also she's also the, the, the youngest armorer i've ever even heard of uh so i knew that they're you know there was there was lack of experience there, but you know how are you going to get experience if people don't take things from Right, exactly. Um, so I was I was cool with it. I was I was like good for you. Uh, you know, I was like good for you, kid. Like you know, getting in there and getting jobs and in a uh, in a predominantly male dominated uh, um, field. Field, and there she is. Like you know, so I was kind of like so for. Um, were you present during the, the uh, Rick, it's not, it's, I said colloquial, go look up colloquialism in the dictionary. It's, it's the common vernacular we use when we describe something is like, if you say that, uh, I call my Jeep a car, my, my, it's not a car, a car is a car. It, you know, it's, it's what you call things. You, you're not going to say, oh, this was a, you're, you're, you're picking at nits here and you, you go ahead think you're, think you're smarter than everybody. Go ahead. It doesn't matter if you give, give yourself the points. This is, 
we're not talking actual definitions here. We are talking the colloquialisms that the actors use when you're talking about things. You know, do we, when you say, you know, do, do, lots of people will, they won't say, I'm having a Pepsi Cola. They'll say, I'm having a Coke. And anything with caffeine in it, people can call a Coke colloquially. But we know it's not a Coke. It can be a Pepsi, and they'll still say, hey, give me a Coke. So, you know, you're you're getting a little bit technical. This this That's specifically and exactly why I said a colloquialism that's used in the film industry. Anything that is within the purview of the props department is a prop. That's why they're called the props department. It's property. It's short for property. It's the property department. It's the property of the film people. Anything within their purview is a prop. And it's a barrel, not a barrow, by the way. That's like the third time you've said barrow. So, uh, sorry, that cuts you under. Like the show and tell day of all the weapons. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, <clears throat> exactly. I, uh, yeah, it was an afternoon. It was out on the set, out on the, marine, uh, the ranch. There was a big table set up with, an array of weapons, um, handguns, long guns. Uh, and she was there with, there were boxes of, of um, blanks. And it was, it was kind of a pick out your gun day. So, you know, that was, cause again, this is, this was part of the character, part of the costume. It was part of that, that building character aspect. It was the same thing as, as going out and picking out our horse. You know, we spent a day out. Well, that's I, a good fact, argument. I did the same. Well, I guess I you win. those things in one day. Okay. I first went to the uh, to the the armor show and tell, picked out my my gun, and then I went over to the horse ranch and picked out my horse. Okay. Um, but in in that uh, show and tell, uh, she asked me, um, "Do you have any?" Uh, what, what level is your experience? And in, in kind of a, not a joking manner, but just kind of wanted to see where she was on the, on the level. Mm -hmm. I said, let's just assume not much. And so, and she, she said, okay, this is how you load it. This is how, we, this is how we check it. This is how, you know, the gun work, this is the trigger. This is the handle. I'm like, okay, okay. Just kind of playing dumb. And she said all the right things. Okay, see, that's a good thing. He's he's saying good things here about Hannah. He's saying good things about... He knows she was inexperienced. She was clearly inexperienced, and you, she asked the right questions of him. What's your experience level? I mean, he could have been a dick like Alec Baldwin. You know, I don't... But, I mean, he literally could have said, I've been handling guns since before you were born. But he said, what? Just... Just assume not much. Just assume I don't know what I'm doing. You tell me what I need to do. He did the right thing, and she seems to have done the right thing. He is literally contradicting everything that Seth, uh, David, uh, Sarah, and uh, Alec basically said about Hannah. Um, but it was more of just kind of an explanation uh, I don't know. There were a lot of safety measures that were explained to me, but it was just more. This is how. This is what a gun is. This is how it works. Mm -hmm. And she goes, um, "If this is the one you like, I'll, I'll load it up with some uh, some rounds, and you can just fire it off into the hill there." No, oh, don't do I that. Said, okay, great. These are dummies. Uh, no, sorry, these are blanks. They were not, they're not live rounds at all. Um, so I think we we're using uh, half loads. Okay. Um, and so. I put my gun belt on and I took my, I took the pistol and she, she took it. She well, that's the out real mystery. This, how the live you know, rounds got uh, there to the firing line, uh, had me stand with facing down range. Uh, and then she, Shut up, great success. she loaded in, uh, a full barrel, a full, uh, full wheel, six shots, of uh, half loads. So I took it, uh, put it in my holster and then, um, <laughs> I, 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 just, I, just like, 
<laughs> the guy is probably friends with Hannah. He's a simp. Yeah, I, 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 after I jokingly told you to shut up, I just actually had this flash in my head of, of Jensen Ackles simping for purple haired armpit sniffing Hannah. <laughs> I just had this picture in my head and I had to stop and share that with you. I you know, like Jensen Ackles actually simping for, for uh, Hannah as, as she just like has her purple and yellow hair, like doing the, the cops aren't looking, let me sniff my armpit thing she did on screen. Oh God. Vicky T. This is Jensen Ackles. This is Dean from supernatural. He was on the set when the shooting happened. He's part of the movie. Surely you've watched Supernatural or Dawson's Creek. This is Jensen Ackles. Let's continue. It's kind of a dick thing for me to do. What's but a dick thing like, for him to do? Uh, oh. Kind of a dick thing for me to do. Well, well, well what I miss? What we... A full barrel, a full, uh, full wheel, six shots, uh, half loads. Mm -hmm. So I took it, uh, put it in my holster, and then... Uh, <laughs> Kind of a dick thing for me to do, but I did like a quick draw and just <laughs> spun it and put it back in. <laughs> and the whole cowboy thing, full on, yeah. full on. Did, did even did the spin, spun She's the gun. Like, the well, she just goes, "Okay, asshole." Like <laughs> you could have told me that you knew how to handle a gun. Um, and so we laughed at that. And then she basically was like, "You're good. Get out of here. Give me your gun." So when you guys that. went down to do the practice shots, was it just solo? Did you guys have like, any other people with you? There were, yeah, there was a whole group of people. There was, uh, uh, there was a couple of producers there. There was, uh, props was there, uh, Sarah and, uh, I can't remember the other, her assistant. I can't remember her name. Um, she was there. Uh, Hannah was there. Uh, uh, but when you went down to shoot? When, oh, I, when I went to, to fire down range, there was I was the only person. Everybody else was behind me at the tables. Okay. So we stepped out around. I, I stepped around the table, walked out probably a good ten paces, and then aimed away from everybody. They were all at like six. Okay. Um, who was watching? Clearly. While well, she would take. While well, she was with me, mm -hmm. props. Okay. And what about the ammo? That would have been all sitting right there in front of him on the table. Nobody was touching anything. Okay. Do you recall on the table what the, you know, the rounds, the blanks were in, and what color of box? Uh, no, I want to say I saw a white tray with just, you know, like a 50 round kind of tray of, of, of rounds. Um, I know that she had a variety because she did, she did say that, uh, she was like, you want to start with quarter loads or do you want to do half loads? And, and I think I said, let's go full loads. And she's like, no, we don't have full loads. Those are too expensive. Okay, right here in chat, everybody get your full load, half load. Jensen Ackles giving her the full load. Get get all those jokes out now so we can continue, please. Gary, go ahead. Get your, oh, I want Jensen's, Jensen Ackles full load. Come on, get it out of your system now. Here we go. All right. Moving right along. Expensive. And I was like, ugh, low-budget films. Because <laughs> mm. <laughs> full loads are just funner. You know, they're, yeah. they're more fun. They just have a bigger blast. But they're also more concussive. Yeah. Um, and did you watch anybody else go and practice with Hannah? Um, I kind of came in. Uh, there were a couple of actors. Angela, there. you're a degenerate. Uh, I love you. <laughs> picking out their their stuff as well. I don't think I saw anybody. I saw uh, Travis shot one. Travis Femmel was there, and he, I think he popped off one round and was like, all right, I'm good. And, but mm. he's, he's also somebody who's got a lot of training. Okay. I clearly knew, uh, now, knew he was somebody who, anybody. I saw uh, Travis shot one. Travis, Travis also is a top notch guy. Um, I I I did I I don't think I've ever seen another movie where Travis handled a gun. Uh, and for those we're talking about Travis Fimmel, who uh, is also known as Ragnar Lothbrok in the Viking series. Uh, he was also involved in this film, uh, and also on the the great uh, sci-fi movie 
uh, raised by wolves. Jeff Femmel was there, and he, yeah. I think he popped off one round and was like, all right, I'm good. And But he's he's also somebody who's got a lot of training. Okay. I clearly knew, uh, knew he was somebody who, who was comfortable around, around weapons. Okay. Um, some of the other guys I, I, I think weren't. Like uh, Alec Baldwin? Had a lot of experience. Um, some of the actors, you know. And Say Alec's name. Say Alec's name. Throw Alex under the bus. People who don't who are comfortable. Same thing with like a horse. You know, I, I was seeing the same thing with the horses that I was with the weapons. No. You know, some people He's are talking like, about the prop round. Oh my gosh. I don't want to say scary. prop rounds. Why, so people turning, get why, is it, why is it turning? Pandies in a twist. Know? And it was like, uh, because it knows you're scared. Yeah, it can feel the fear rounds through or your legs. half-loaded rounds. Yeah. Um, you know, I could, I could tell the way that people were handling some of their, their guns too, that they just were, it was awkward. Okay. Um, but again, uh, I never felt the need to like speak up and be like, put, your, put your fucking gun down. Yeah. Yeah, don't point it. Don't point it at me. Were you there when um, no. Alec was doing? I did not see him. Practice? Okay. I know that the gun was there because somebody went to pick that and they were like, no, 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 that one's, that one's Alex. Okay. We're saving that one for Alec. I think. Okay. Wasn't there, wasn't there, so. What about any target shooting? Nope. None? Mm-hmm. That was the only that was the only time uh, that I ever um, fired a gun when the cameras weren't rolling for this project. Was that day? And you didn't see anybody like take guns out during lunch or after production hours, nope. anything of the sort. No, um, and I know that that's um, that that's uh, being okay. talked about because. I've even got, uh, why can't we just keep this damn angle the whole time? Why, why do we have to get like production value out of police interrogation videos? Uh, just leave the damn camera here. So this is an interesting thing too. Talk, Cause that's what everybody's saying. Oh, you know, they were practicing shooting live rounds during lunch and whatnot. Now he's saying, nah, I never saw it. And now we're going to see uh, text messages relating to that. Apparently. My wife is like, show them the text. Message. <laughs> Um, I'll show you kind of what what I received. Uh, I'll have to watch it. I like him as an actor. Thank you. Yeah, but I did. I did hear that uh, that someone may have taken the guns and done some target shooting or something, and that just seemed crazy to me. Like nobody. Nobody messes with products like, right. during production, unless it's scheduled. Yeah. Unless the producers are like, we, you know, we need training for an actor. We need to take him out and or take her out and, and teach her or him how to use, how to properly use and properly shoot. And, um, but this was a low budget thing that wasn't happening. We didn't really get the opportunity to to do that. Nor did, in my opinion, did we miss it. I didn't need it. Um, could there have been some actors that have would have benefited from that? Maybe, but they knew what they were getting into. This is he is being so damn candid here, and in by being candid, he's he's really supporting a lot of things that other people are saying. Um, you know, it's he knew it was a low budget film. He wasn't happy with the amount of training, with the amount of you know, firearm safety that's going, and that goes totally in line with what the uh, the OSHA, the uh, you know, the safety report said was that Hannah was told not to waste time training people because she'd already burned through her eight days of armor armor pay, and now she was supposed to focus on being a prop master, not supposed to conduct daily briefings, not supposed to conduct daily trainings. So he's just being candid as hell, and he's supporting a lot of stuff that's going on back, uh, you know, you know, back behind the scenes with the investigations. So, yeah. Uh, 
entry read. Thank you so much. Sorry to sorry it took me so long to get around to this. Uh, it really pisses me off that clueless people think a gun is like an unstable vial of nitroglycerin. It's not. If you don't have a brain in your head, don't touch a gun, and please don't talk about them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like the ooh, well, it's the, it's the you know, the ooh, guns are dangerous. Gu guns are perfectly safe. Guns, the old, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's so cliche, but it's true. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Uh, if you just have that gun sitting there and you don't fuck with it, it's not going to kill you. It's when you start fucking with it that you're going to get dangerous. You're going to get hurt if you're not careful. Thank you so much for that. Again, apologies for the length of time it took me to get to that. Uh, angels lie to keep control. Thank you so much for your super chat. Question, does this prove that the others are trying to pin it on Hannah? Um, I I mean, he is, in my opinion, is really, really, really supportive of, of Hannah's work on I mean, not, not because he's simping for her, like some have said, but just because he's just telling you how it was. He knew she was, he knew she was inexperienced, but she still hit the main point. She still hit the right points. It wasn't as uh you know, it wasn't as thorough, but he realized it was a low budget production. But you know, rather than proving that people are trying to pin it on Hannah, I think he's just he's he's essentially establishing that she wasn't as big a screw up as everybody is saying. So why is everybody else saying she's she's a screw up? Because she's the easiest one to pin the blame on because she was blessed with that title armorer. So I mean, covering themselves. In, in cover in you know for covering their own asses you know this that's who they're just, they're gonna go to the natural easiest person to pin the blame on which is the armorer yeah thank you so much for that super chat uh, and while we've paused don't forget to hit that like button 560 of you here 418 likes we can at least get another hundred likes out of y'all. So just reach right on down there really quick. It doesn't take but half a second to click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, please, 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 please subscribe to the channel. If you have subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do it again. <laughs> and we're going to go overtime. Damn it. I was going to try to have this thing wrapped up in about 45 minutes, but we've got about a little over an hour left. So I'm going to have to shut up and shut up more and keep viewing more. But all right. Yeah. I don't like Alec Baldwin though. Yeah, I don't like him either. I, there's, I, there's not a whole lot I like about him. Um, all right, like, subscribe, and uh, super chat if you want to. Here we go. Let's go. It's a, a low budget film. It's, you know, it's like guerrilla shooting. We just you, you got to get on that horse and hope it goes the way you want it. <laughs> uh, it's kind of scary when it comes to horses, but and guns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't find that text. Okay, okay. I'm just curious, and this is a little off topic. Yeah. Um, I know that day, the day of the incident, we went out there. Yeah. Uh, were you at base camp when we arrived? Oh, or Alex should be locked up. Just because we didn't see Fuck you there. Him. I was just standing back from set. Okay. I was, I was still there. I know they told everybody to go to base camp, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It wasn't my, it's not my MO. We're still trying to gather everybody that was close to the incident to interview. And yeah, I was, uh, I had moved away from the church, but was still in proximity, okay. still watching. Uh, in fact, I even, I think I even took a picture just as things were unfolding. I don't know, I don't know why I did this, but I think I, Oh, how helpful. Uh, He's even like drawing pictures and stuff. This was kind of where I was. It's got pictures um, of everything. Cool. And proximity, like you can see the, you can see the. the oh, okay, yeah, you can see the units and the. Coming yeah. in, and so I was, I'd moved. I think either one of those cops could ask that question. And just, just, sure. So this, all this equipment was the equipment you're moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and moving it back towards that, uh, back towards that. Uh, the truck. That, that box truck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah, so as as you guys were were arriving, I was just kind of like moving back and <laughs> nice. I walked back to the shuttle and was like gonna get in and then I was like, no, I'm just gonna be pacing at base camp wanting to see wanting to see how they get 
kill and wait out because at that point they were still conscious and they were still like i didn't know i, I never thought that this would have been a fatal wound i was like okay they got here quick they're treating her they're treating him on site they're going to get them out and but i i was standing by waiting for updates on what was happening inside because i wanted to know what was happening with with my director and my dp who i've been yeah, no, definitely. working intimately close with for the past three and a half weeks every day what time did um the day start that day uh every day started around sunrise and it ended was at sunset that was pretty much do you know about what time you started uh i could go back and look but um i would have gotten there uh i would have gotten there probably at 6 15 6 30 somewhere in there ready for 7 30. okay and what time do you do you break for lunch six hours after call i think it was about it would have been eight o'clock call maybe so mm. yeah two one thirty maybe it's usually six hours after call whatever call was that day and i forget what it was okay. i usually come in early so, so that i'm ready at call um they bring the actors in to get them processed which is hair makeup wardrobe okay. um but yeah lunch is six hours after call and then uh and then we would wrap usually at sunset Okay. Do you know what time you came back from lunch? Not exactly. I, I do remember it being well. Hmm. I'll show you right now. So this happened. That was at two o'clock. Uh, yeah. So we broke. We broke for lunch probably around one, just after one o'clock. And that was, I believe, like a half hour lunch, and then we came back. Okay. I don't. I. I mean, I'm kind of guesstimating. Um, how? An AD would be able to know to tell you exactly because they, they they log all that stuff. Production, okay. production reports have exact times on all that stuff. How quickly after lunch did the incident take place? It was the first shot, the first uh, so to speak. I keep saying shot. Like, <laughs> come up with a better term. <laughs> nice, um, breaded. That's totally unbreaded, Jensen. After lunch, the first camera setup after lunch. Um, so they turned around. They were now facing. Uh, the uh, other the, the other end of the church, um, not the door, opposite of the door, and they were starting with a tight insert of Alec pulling the gun out. And he then said they, tight and insert. Then I walk in. I have my few words. I think they were going to pull back to see Alex. <laughs> Milka Merch, uh, you're one hour and thirty minutes behind. The cop sounds like Spidey. Well, an hour and thirty minutes from now. Uh, you'll have realized that other people have made that comment as well. People, a lot, there's been a lot of people saying he sounds like Spidey. Pulls, pulls the gun out, does this, pulls back the hammer, and then jumps out and starts shooting at me. Um, so that would have it was the first setup. So they were setting lights, they were getting camera, they were picking out lenses, all that kind of stuff. Selena was right there. Joel was right there. Al was right there showing the action. This is what we do. And that's that's a very, very normal um, procedure when you're setting up a camera shot is the actor goes through the action, what they're going to do. Then the, the DP says, OK, then I need a light over here. I need a bounce right here. I need a, the camera. I want, it, I want it to be right here. Let's put a 50 milliliter, a 50 mil lens on. Uh, the director's like, OK. And then we go into a camera rehearsal, which is not rolling just Let's see every, all the action with the camera. If there's a move, a camera move. So the action with the camera move, boom. Okay, great. Let's roll sound. Let's do a take. So this was the the preliminary setting up the shot. Okay. We had they weren't even we weren't even into rehearsal yet. Did you see um, who Helen handed Alec for them no. at lunch? No. What about putting his belts on? Anything in the store like that? No. Okay. Because um, again, I was just outside the set. Um, I was in there for a little bit, like watching him kind of like do some setup stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, okay, they're just setting up. So I just stepped outside to get some, you know, air because it's it got pretty dusty, it gets pretty dusty in there. Yeah. <clears throat> During rehearsal, when Alec was sitting on the pew, mm -hmm. uh, on the pew after pew, lunch. Pew. 
Do you, was the gun supposed to be loaded with dummies or was it no rounds in the chamber kind of thing? It should have been loaded with dummies. Okay. Yeah, there were no, he was not, um, we weren't getting into the firefight at that, um, for that particular setup. Mm -hmm. uh, I would imagine the next setup would have been, we would have loaded our guns with, with blanks and we would have gotten into uh, to firing off our, our pistols. Um, so this was supposed to be, it, it should have been a, a full of dummies. Because it was going to be a tight shot of the gun with those guns because they're so they're so old and rudimentary you can see the brass mm -hmm. so you can see the brass you see the tips you see the bullets um so they would have been loaded with with dummies to to look like real to make the appearance of that so it's loaded make, to make it look like it's it's loaded with real bullets um did you ever see the dummies on the set did you see what they look like um uh, well, i certainly saw the ones in my gun every every morning Okay. Uh, my yeah, she has a very good too. singing voice. Um, and but I never, um, I can't remember if I ever walked over. To, I mean, yeah, I, I walked over to the to the camera, or I'm sorry, uh, not the camera card, the props card, to either get to receive my my uh, belt and gun, or to hand it off at the end of the day or at lunch. Um, and I remember seeing. I'm not going to be a bear. Guys can look, but on the card. it's for the women. Um, but I can't. I wouldn't be able to tell you more than that. I'm not a bear. Well, you had mentioned the, earlier that they had clay tips. Mm -hmm. Did the ones that you saw have clay tips? <laughs> I would have no reason to think otherwise. Okay. Uh, without without giving them in, in like a really intense uh, uh, inspection. Um. I wouldn't. Uh, um, yeah, I would have. I would have looked at. I would have looked at the the the, the tray Happy of birthday. Bullets. My birthday's in July. Uh, I'm sorry, the tray of, of dummy rounds. But thanks. And assume that they were all dummy rounds, and you could have very easily mixed in a half a dozen live rounds in there, and I, I wouldn't have known the difference. No, I'm and a cancer. Inspection. I would have had to take them out, either shake them or inspect the uh, what do they call the brass ring on the back. The primer. Not the primer. No. Um, I mean, but yes, they look the primer. All the dummies have punch primers. All the punch primers. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, and I, which I've done before, but I, I, I hadn't, I hadn't really done on this project, nor have I felt, nor I felt the need to do it. If it's a clay tip, is it? What color is it? It's made to look exactly like a live round, okay. so it would be that gray. So it looks like iron. Um, you had said that your the guns were loaded every morning. Did you ever see who loaded them? Um, I only ever witnessed Hannah loading them. Okay. Did she? Did you see her load them that morning? I should remember. And I, could, I wouldn't be able to tell you what mornings I did and what mornings I didn't. I just know that. If I was happening, happening to walk by the props card and seeing her at work, I wouldn't have been like, I wouldn't have really taken notice. It's just everybody's work, everybody's doing their job. You know, people are setting up lights, people are moving boxes, people are, you know, setting up their cameras. She's loading up her weapons. Like that was just, that was her job. So it wouldn't have stood out to me. Okay. How many days um, prior to incident day did you guys do live fire? I mean, mm -hmm. the movie <laughs> fire. Um, <clears throat> and I like that he's really thinking a about handful. his answers. Um, the day before we, we did live fire, um, I got I got shot. Uh, Travis Fimmel, uh, his character shoots me in the, in the shoulder, and so we did. Uh, from he Winnie the Pooing it. He he fired off a half a half load at me, um, but I felt safe. I was more than twenty feet away, which is usual industry protocol. Um, and it was a half load, so it wasn't going to be a large concussion. Concussion, um, and uh, and I didn't have to do a, a squib. I just did a spin to the ground. Okay. Um, but then, in addition to that. Uh, Alec also fired that day. This was the day before. Hmm. Um, also fired that day. But again, those kinds of 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 uh, instances, they would be 
much. They'd be taking out the dummy rounds and putting in crimp tip blanks. So very clearly not a, uh, doesn't look like a real bullet. Mm -hmm. the, sole, the sole purpose of having a muzzle flash. Um, and when that happens, when they take out the dummies and they put in the crimp tips, then it's got a hot gun, you know, six rounds. Well, happy early birthday, Isabel. Everybody's safety, everybody get back. You don't have to be on set, get out. Uh, camera, if they, if they are close, um, you know, once I, I did a shot very close to camera and they put up, uh, they put a protective, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Lexan. Um, I had a, another, I, I shot off shotgun at one point and our A camera operator, Andy was very close and I was like, we need to get more, I need, I need more stuff for him. I didn't feel comfortable. I was like, I need more stuff for him. Very common. Um, mm. I, I, he's sharp I like him. I, i've done that many times like where the camera camera guys are like oh i can get in here and i'm like no i'm not shooting at you that close and that's just because i like a, a lot of it's just uh the, really the biggest threat from a movie gun is uh is uh gunpowder dust getting sprayed in your eyes and burning your eyes it's really the, the you know, the only threat, the wadding yeah. thing, that's... He's thing literally the only person that sounds like he knows what the fuck he's talking uh, about. And he knows what so he's talking about. Really, the the safety measure is to protect people's eyes. And also, um, if you're too close, and I'm using a, a shotgun, I use a full load, I feel like getting hit in the chest, just from the concussion of the of the blast. Yeah. If you're, if you're too close, which, you know, might injure you in some way, shape or form, I don't know, but... Still, I just, I feel comfortable when I know that there's protective stuff in front and, you know, nobody's in harm's way. Um, and like I said, we had a, we had a shootout maybe a week prior to this where I put all, I, I, I think I uh, let off two half loads on the shotgun, dumped the, dumped the long gun and then drew a pistol and fired off all six rounds. Okay. Um, but again, all blanks. And then when the, when it was, Prior to that, it was loaded with dummies. It was always loaded with dummies, just so it looked like it had bullets in it. Right. Um, what about the accidental discharges that had happened? Didn't hear anything about that. I have no idea what people are talking about. Okay. I, I don't know. If that happened, then it's strange I didn't hear about it, because, like I said, I was on set most of the time. So, A, didn't happen while I was there. I didn't witness anything ah. like that. And, B, I never even heard about it. So I don't know if. Um, what about that squib that went off? Um, Thank you, Nicole. Becoming a fanboy, are we? Lol, don't blame yeah, me. I'm not, I'm not I, becoming a fanboy. I liked. I've always and liked him as an again, actor. Like, but I respect him now because he's smart. He's on like point. He doesn't cut on corners. He keeps like, safety like, protocols. He insists jam. on safety protocols that don't All exist. Mm -hmm. Great guy. You know, it's that kind of stuff is 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 normal on a on a movie set or on a on a tv set that's dealing with firearms uh, you know you, you instantly yell cut as an actor i would just yell i just like i was like cut 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 got a jam and i would literally just aim keep it aim towards the ground and the armor would come over and take it from me and fix it reload it okay we're good all right roll sound very very commonplace for that stuff to happen that's not a that, i wouldn't chalk that up as a safety issue Okay. That's just guns doing what they do. Okay. What about, um, did you ever, you know, I know you guys have like safety bulletins and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a safety meeting every morning. And there was one every morning. for this production? Every morning. Who hosted them? Dave. Okay. Dave. That's, that's the first AD's job, is to host a safety meeting every morning. Um, I'm present? not I'm not usually, actors are, are not usually there, uh, but it's for it's not for us, it's for the crew. I'm guessing that's when they hand out, you know, air protection, night protection. If uh, you guys are gonna shoot half loads or quarter loads, what, yeah, we're gonna have live animals on set today. We're gonna have we're gonna have live gunfire. Uh, you know, we're gonna have. Now, look, we've got strong Scott, winds coming this don't afternoon. Don't say things we like that with so many women equipment. here in the crowd. They, that's the safety meeting. They're, they're like, like wow. let them know what we're dealing with today. If there's any safety concerns, where you go, who you need to talk to. Uh, 
your and I uh, safety equipment will be available. This is where it's available, like oh, that. And that happens every morning. And you were there for? I was, I was not there. Was I there for that day? I can't remember if I was there uh, for the safety meeting that day. But I know I I walked in on on a safety meeting multiple times because they would call us to set, and I'd arrive on set while they were giving uh, the safety meeting. I blame all of this on you, Scott. Do they <laughs> post it like anywhere else on, you know, your call sheets, or do they send you mm-hmm. guys like a protocol of like, hey, today we're dealing with live animals, therefore these are your protocols. Call sheets. That's on the call sheets. And and you saw it on these call sheets. I. I mean, again, like it doesn't really pertain to me, so I kind of skip over it. But I do know that it's, it, it, it is uh, supposed to be there. It is there, and usually there, and it probably was that day. Those are easy to get. You can get those call sheets. Uh, sheets they'll have those on file, so you can see whether or not the safety guidelines were there that day, or whether they even needed to be. I said that's probably an OSHA thing. You know. Okay. Any of the actors ever complained? Uh, that we're handling a revolver ever complain about a faulty hammer no. on the gun? No. Not to me. Ooh, that question was designed to get Alex. Do you totally. know, so that cart that props and... Uh... That question was designed to go straight for Alec. No question about it. Because that was his deal. Oh, you know, because they know that that, that has the, uh, the safety bar. Once you pull it back like an eighth of an inch to quarter cock level, it'll... They they know, and then Alex, oh, you know, faulty hammer. That I I believe he specifically used the term faulty hammer. I believe Alex did. Alec Baldwin did. That question there, were there any reports of guns with faulty hammers? That was specifically designed to check Alec to fact check Alec Baldwin. Nice. You know, Mr. Uh, I, I have my iPhone, I my Apple Watch sports band guy in the way of all the girls' eye candy. Yeah, that was a good question. Finally, after an hour and, well, one hour and two minutes, he asks, asks a decent question. Uh, the armor uses? Mm-hmm. Where is it normally? Close by set. Okay. Um, it's the, it's essentially their work cart. Everybody has kind of their work stations. Camera, there's a camera cart. There's, uh, you know, a, a grips cart. There's an electrics cart. There's a props cart. Everybody has their kind of rolling workstations that wherever the set is that rolls with them and goes there and that's where they that's where they base their operation out of is from that card okay did you happen to see um this you know that particular day um where that cart was or where is it supposed to go during lunch do you know uh well the cart would would stay put but they would and I don't know this. I don't know if this happened. I can't say yes or no. But I, I just know, um, generally speaking, they would safety um, guns, particularly and rounds, particularly uh, during lunch. They would go lock them up, put them in a lockup, like in the truck. Okay. Um, did you see anybody that, do it that That's why not, I don't not, use I metal bracelets on my watches. I use I NATO straps okay. and uh, uh, silicone. Because my okay. hair gets caught so in the bracelets and it hurts like fuck. Is there, you know, uh, obviously we're dealing with this whole issue with cam crew. Um, yeah. And I said that they had walked off. You and me How both. many people did you see from that camera crew that morning? None, because uh, I wasn't on set when the situation happened. Okay. Um, we were back at base camp. We were told to come to set and then got turned around and went back. So... My only account of what happened was just from later going up to Bruce was going, what the fuck? But you didn't. Oh, Statue of Misk is here. Hey, what's up? Okay. I observed them on previous days. Um, you know, one in particular just mm, bitch. Mm-hmm. She was just, you know, he was just kind of a whiny bitch. <laughs> okay. To put it to put it simple. Uh you know, I, I recall rolling my eyes at, you know, several of them. Wait, 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 wait. who's a whiny was, bitch? I, I missed that. Uh, I was too busy reading chat. My only account of what happened was just from later going up to Bruce was going, what the fuck? But you didn't observe any of them no. there? No. Okay. I observed them on previous days, um, you know, one in particular just 
fucking bitch. She's just, you know. Was, Who are we talking about? Okay. Um, we, uh, I wasn't oh, the camera crew. When the situation happened. Okay. Um, I guess we're talking about the camera crew. Yeah, the camera um, crew. All right. So, so one of the camera the crew was a whiny bitch. Okay. Um, we were back at base camp. We were told to come to set, and then got turned around and went back. So my only account of what happened was just from later going up to Bruce was going, "What well, fuck?" But you didn't observe any of them no. there. Okay. I observed them on previous days. Um, you know, um, one in particular, just mm, bitch. Exactly. Yeah, remember, the camera crew were trying to hold the film set hostage. They had some minor complaints about safety, but they also had like uh, you know their their uh, treatment. They wanted to be closer. They wanted you know to you know, better con- working conditions, and they said, "Well, it's not in your contract." So they held they held the film crew hostage basically and said, "Well, we're done." And they walked off the set uh, the day before and the morning of the incident. So he's just talking about the camera crew now being whiny bitches and things. You know, he was just kind of a whiny bitch, <laughs> to put it to put it simple. Uh, you know, I I recall rolling my eyes at you know several of his little outbursts of, of a variety of things. Okay. Um, you know, lunch wasn't big enough. That kind of shit. Like, really, go to craft service. There's food galore all day long. Yeah. You're well fed. Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> like, we get well fed when we go work on Yeah, this. exactly. <laughs> so. That's what I'm saying. Like, anybody who's complaining about the, the you know, the food on a film set is, is a whiny bitch. Okay. Is there um, anything that would lead you to believe that... One of these camera people would have brought lead ammo. I think, I, in my, I mean, I know we're probably not supposed to give opinions, but in my opinion, I just feel, I just find it very hard to believe. That they would bring it on set? That they would even have access to it. Okay. Most camera guys are, they're nerds. I mean, I love camera guys. I'm a nerd too. Like, I, I'm, I'm a geek about that stuff. But these aren't guys that go out and get live rounds from a gun store and then, planted on set that's that seems that seems like a risk too far for me is there any one that you think would in a malicious way no i just Mm. i i I can't if you pointed out to anybody on the crew and said this person maliciously bought brought and planted live ammo I would be shocked because I don't think there's not anybody I could point to and be like, that guy kills cats on the weekend. Like, <laughs> none of them. Everybody was, they were all film technicians. They were all, they're all film <laughs> like that. We all are. Um, there, there was no, there was no one on the film crew that looked like they killed cats on the weekend. <laughs> I was calling the film crew a whiny bitch, but none of them look like they kill cats on the weekend. Yeah, that's why it's just so shocking to me. That's why I'm like, that's, that's, you know, largely responsible why when you said, hey, can you come out to Santa Fe? I was like, yeah. Because I just, I, I want to know how did this, how did this fucking happen? So if I can shed any light to give you guys any kind of a leg up in finding out how live, because people are like, how did the safety protocol break down? How did that happen? I'm like, that's the question is how did live rounds end up on a set? That's all I care about. Because right. had a live round not ended up on set, we wouldn't be talking right now. Of course, but it at wasn't, the same time, yes, you know, safety. We'll have the, the protocols jobs. protocols did get skipped. Mm. Absolutely. That should have been found. Okay, so now 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 he's kind of targeting in a bit there. Protocols were skipped. And that, you know, unfortunately is the person who was hired to safety the ammunition which is a specialty job. And that person didn't catch the fact that there were live rounds mixed in with dummy rounds. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you ever see Alec missing his firearm? No. No. Um, Or acting in a reckless manner with it? Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't. um, Because I know you had said that he, you know, you're showing how he's practicing with it. Well, he was just he was just doing what he was uh, uh, rehearsing what he was going to do in this in the scene mm-hmm. so that Alina and Reed could see
see it and set a shot, set a, a camera angle. So he, he was being asked to do exactly what he was doing. Okay. He wasn't just, he wasn't just playing with it. Right. This was d deliberately pulling it out and aiming it at a certain, in a certain way to catch the light right and have the camera angle perfectly. You know, she was, you know, she was probably like, wait, 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 just, just aim, aim, aim look like that, looking at the monitor, like, oh, just, just maybe two degrees that way. But no, no, bring it back a little bit. Okay, that's the light. That's like that's what she's doing at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, and again, I don't, I don't know the the intimate details at that point whether he drew back on the hammer and it slipped, or whether he drew the hammer back and and squeezed the trigger. Um, that doesn't make sense to me because he wasn't firing a shot in that particular at that particular moment of the scene. Because he's a fuckwit. He that's why getting ready to, and then he jumps up and. And shoots at me. Speaking of that, um, are you guys ever, you know, <clears throat> trained or go over when you're just rehearsing trigger safety, or do you always practice it? And you know, finger I always on... flag the trigger, but that's just me. Okay. And to answer your question, no. But I I do that because I've had real world training by law enforcement and and um, uh, other. You know, military, military and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I did, I've done the whole CHL course, but I didn't even apply for my license. So I just wanted to do the course. Yeah. And I had a friend in, in uh, law enforcement who was putting on the, a weekend thing. And he was like, hey, do you want, want to do this? And I was like, yeah. Especially in Texas, man. everybody owns guns. Everybody owns guns. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so but no, as far as, as far as trigger safety goes, not really discussed. Okay. How do you think this lead animal gun set? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure you've heard uh, all the rumors that I have, and probably more, of uh, somebody maliciously planning it. Which, which I just, I, I'd be shocked if that's if that's what it was. Somebody trying to ruin an Alec Baldwin film because because he's polarizing in his political beliefs in real life. Seems like a free extreme a pretty extreme thing to do um and then i've also heard that that uh you know hannah took the guns and went planking with um some of her friends or some crew or mm. and then got intoxicated and um didn't remember putting everything back and could have mistakenly loaded real rounds of dummy rounds and just not and forgot about it the next day. And came back and like, oh, here's my dummies. Did you ever witness her drink? Huh. What about anybody else? Uh, that's not true. Um, uh -oh. There was one evening uh -oh. where uh, a large, a large part of the cast and crew uh, ended up at the same bar in. Santa Fe. Okay, Han Hannah admitted to this as well. Hannah admitted everybody was drinking one night. Everybody got drunk. People were doing weed every day. Uh, yes, yeah, so every everybody like at night they would all go back and like smoke weed all the time and get drunk. Yes, yeah, so, all right. Hannah's admitted to this. He's just nailing this particular uh, point down, I guess. Wait. Um, Come on. And I did see her there. But that was upset. Yeah, I'm that old. Was, That's what we yeah. say. Okay. Yeah. That's what we said back in the day. You got to do your weed, you know. I'm elder. That was the only time I ever saw her. Also, okay. and most of those people. And she hadn't mentioned anything about going out and nope. doing any sort of who is ultimately in charge of safety. You youngsters need to get up that? on us old timer lingo. Um, Reefer from madness. An overall standpoint, uh, the first AD. So, David. He would be he would be the generalized like safety guy, but then there are specialty people that are the horse wranglers. Say this, they did. The alcohol got their the brain. The horses. I mean, if a horse takes off, Dave's not the one who goes and gets it. Yeah, that's what we have horse wranglers for, yeah. and we had that happen multiple times where a horse bucked loose and took off running, and they had to go chase him down. Um, like some horses. What's that? It sounds like some untrained horses. Yeah, they weren't 
They weren't overly trendy. Smoking <laughs> the devil's lettuce. <laughs> Like, the horses. He's even complaining the horses are low budget. <laughs> is there reefer in that pipe? No, there is not reefer in the pipe. We, we old people, we had our we had our language. You know, we did we did the we we did the marijuana. We did the, you know. Nope, this is just straight up general old backy, not the wacky backy, not the devil's lettuce. <laughs> Uh, I forget. I don't know the name of the outfit. I just, I just remember the Is names of the ring. The, the, the guy from the well, you know, right down the street from the ranch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I used to wrangle for him. And yeah. Yeah. You got to do your weed. He always put me doing on. weed. And oh, really? Rolling your uh, spliffs. Yeah. yeah. He, they put. Got it. Got to Can't forget to roll your spliffs. Put me on a trouble horse because I, again, I, I, I'm not afraid. Like I have confidence around horses. Yeah. I'm not an amazing writer, but I I was comfortable. I'm comfortable around horses. Um, no, it's not, oh, it's again, Maui Wowie, man. The safety aspect of it. Yeah, the, you know, that's a Maui uh, Wowie. Um, Raleigh uh, was the, the, the lead wrangler, and he was in charge of, of horses. Uh, Alan uh, was in charge of stunts, so he was in charge of any kind of uh, stunts that that were um, that were happening with the actors or the stunt people. Um, I didn't do a whole like I mean, for instance, like when I got shot, I did a spin and hit the ground. And it's how his responsibility to come up to me and go, "Do you need pads? Do you feel comfortable?" You know, blah blah blah. Not Dave. You know, he's he's kind of the he's kind of the umbrella safety. But then there are specific people that are designated to safety specific aspects of the filmmaking scooby um, snacks yep so again alan would have been for stunts rolly would have been for horses hannah would have been for ammunition yeah brownies and cookies. and cookies they were the scooby snacks <laughs> no and i was surprised to hear that okay. anything else that you can think of that you know would stick out or you know that might help us out It, I mean, it just it'd be speculative. I, you know, I'm sure you guys are getting all that. Um, you know, I didn't. Uh, again, I I personally felt safe, <laughs> but I will say that it was largely due to because of <laughs> in my personal Labrador, man. <laughs> well, man, um, this tastes like dog shit. It was a little loose. Oh, you youngsters. You'll never worse. know why that's so funny. As far as the gun safety goes, from my experience. Um, but I've also been part of big budget things that have highly qualified <laughs> and experienced day. people doing these jobs. Did you ever see anybody like overly pressuring him? To do anything. Yeah, man. Like to where she would have felt intimidated or no, she seemed to have she was, you know, she she had a kind of a cocky confidence air to her. Um all right, women. Jason Ackle just know, said she cock. around. She was the she was the armor. Yeah. Probably one of the youngest ones there are. She has she, a cocky she, attitude she about it. She wore that a little bit. Okay. So she never seemed uncomfortable with anything no. that was being asked of her. No. Or anything that she was doing. No. She seemed very confident in, in everything and had no, there was no stuttering or, or shiftiness or uh, hesitancy on her part. She, that's why I was like, I, I, you know, I felt like she had. Why no? That would be wrong of me. She had the confidence. Of course not. And she was saying all the right words and doing all the right things. And if uh, if she if she didn't know what she was doing, she was certainly faking it well. Hmm. Okay. Um. Going back to Anna. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So with her. 
I'm sure you've seen the statement that she's released. Yeah. Um, Saying that she was not given the time or, or... And that she was pressing for training. Right. And <clears throat> stuff like that. Any knowledge to that? Which, I mean... In my opinion, I think it's because it's uh, this was a low budget move. Same thing, the same reason I think that the, the camera crew is walking out with this. They know they're signing up for it. So, low budget movie, there's not budget for, for putting everybody up for four seasons. I'm sure they'd like to do that, but they can't do that. They don't have money. The financiers gave a certain amount of money. That's how much we had to get it done. Everybody who came on the show, everybody who came on this, on this movie knew that it was going to be tight. Um, I would have loved to have had three weeks of horse training, you know, yeah. but I didn't. I had a half, I had a half a day, I had an afternoon to, to pick a horse out and ride him around and get comfortable. And then the next day I was on camera on the horse. <laughs> that's not, that's not her. I mean. So you never heard her like requesting. I wonder how many bullets any... Sam took during that I entire mean, 15 I, years. I would have been privy to that. If she was having private conversations with the producers going like, I really need, you know, I need Jensen for a half a day. I need Alec for a day. I think, mean, and again, I would never have expected that phone call on a project like this. I knew they were hiring me for, you know, for what I could do. They asked me, you know, have, have you written more support? I was like, yeah. Okay. We, we know we've seen from your work that you've clearly handled guns before. So we know you're good there. So, I feel like there was, you know, a part of a part of why I was hired was because of my experience and comfortability with with this and not needing additional training, not needing to come out three weeks early and rehearse with horses and with weapons. And uh, there you go, women. Sorry, Jensen Ackles came out three weeks early. Uh, sorry, he's off the market. Even rehearsal. His wife knows with the dialogue. Mm-hmm. We didn't get rehearsal. That's you know that's something that big budget movies get. Jesus, you, know, you come in, they don't even get rehearsal. Nice, rehearse for with the director and the actors for weeks, and then and then you go to camera. Didn't get any of that. We were lucky to get a rehearsal before we rolled before we rolled camera. It's pretty much like here's your papers. And, yeah, uh, it's like here's your script. These are the words you're saying. Here's your gun. This is when you're shooting, and here's your horse. Good luck, cowboy. He's pissed about being in a yeah. low budget movie. I hope you envision <laughs> your head, and I hope you can pull it off. You know, I mean, I was, there was, I think the second day I was on that horse, we were, they were like, okay, right up to that ridge and then just come, come screaming down at us. And so I was, you know, riding, 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 trying to keep my hat from flying off, you know, eyes down, trying to get that. And then we were going, we are going, and and my poor horse hit one of those uh, groundhog holes and just Uh, like went down and the whole horse went like pitch forward. And I was like, here I go. Yeah. And then I just yanked up at the last second and he could lift it up right at the last second. And then I was just, I, I know I held it together because I, I looked at the playback and I was, it was like, right. right. <laughs> but inside I was screaming like a little kid. Like, oh, <laughs> when horses do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, we all would have loved rehearsal on a variety of levels. Yeah, he's not happy about being in a low budget film sure, at all. But that's not we knew that that's not what we were gonna get with this project. Everybody knew that. Rock Hudson was you married said, too, and right, he was gay so, the day as well. I know you talked about, you know, Hannah always said the right things. She was always, you know, having correct terminology and this work. The day of the incident, mm-hmm. after lunch, when you guys know about your gear and everything of the sort, mm-hmm. did anybody call out, you know, cold gun, hot gun, anything of the sort like that? Um, I know that that's been reported that Dave uh, yelled cold gun. Um, I was just standing off set, so I didn't hear that. Okay, I was going to say he just confirmed that uh, David Hall's yelled cold gun, but he was off set, so he did not hear it. Now, it's still only Alec Baldwin saying anything about cold gun. But he wouldn't have needed to scream it to everybody outside the set. He would have just, if, if in fact he handed the gun, which I think he is admitted to, which, <laughs> if my regulation serves me, I, I thought I remember Hannah walking into set, um, with the gun, and in my mind, and I don't know if I'm just filling in blanks here because I didn't see it, or if I did 
see it like one of those things like did i see that or am i just filling in a blank mm -hmm. the, the set was so like you know alec was here camera was here elena joel dave was here and so hannah came in from the back it would have been made perfect sense for her to be like uh here's alex gun and him go okay great thanks here you go hold gun or looked at it seen her did, did a check i don't know if that i don't know if that happened or not mm -hmm. But it's just that way because Hannah couldn't get into him. Okay. I, but you didn't see it. But I, 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 I feel like I saw that, but I, I, I can't, I, I can't remember if that's exactly how it happened or not. Okay. But I know that Hannah was right there, and if she was right there, then there would be no reason for Dave to have walked over to the cart. Because I know where the cart was. The cart was, you know, if this is. If this is the church, and here's the, the entrance, there were tents right here where cast chairs were. The cart was on the back side of that. Okay. And you're talking about those black pop-up tents? Yes. Yeah. So it was on the back side of those? Yeah. That's where Bob's cart was. Okay. So it was, you know, a good, a, a good, yeah, like 30, 50 yards away from the entrance of the set. Okay. How far distance-wise between... Alec and the camera, and then Helena and Joel. Camera was right in there because it was a close up. It was, it was no, like it was Bruce Lee's son, Brandon. Because he was, he was drawing out the gun like The wadding right? in the end of a, of a, uh, so uh, the camera <coughs> blank round. Hey, let me give you a thing now. It wasn't Bruce Lee, well, it was his son. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it was, it was, uh, Alex, or Alec here, uh, camera there. Uh, Elena there, Joel there, Reed sitting on the camera, and then there was, you know, a, a Dave would have been here, if I remember correctly, and then there was like, Scripty was here, Wardrobe was over here, there was a, a couple of others, I think uh, Serge was right there, so when, when Alec fired it, it, you know, it went like that. Well. Um, and then, you know, here's the, here's the, the front of the church, and then this one's the, <laughs> the, the back of the church. Um, Reefer madness, man, I'm telling you, it's a thing. Reefer madness. She, the camera was probably four feet. So it's really close. Oh, she All was this right talk there. about it pie, and I'm realizing I haven't had a date in a week close. or two. That's why. 45 rounds goes right through her. She's not a big girl. It's not Shut surprising up. I went through her. Any hey, animosity statuette. between Alec and Lena? Oh, God, no. No, I really love her. Okay. Um, and he's, he was... I Bro, one of my movie. family's favorites. I like it I because Bai Ling was hot side. in that movie. You know, she's, I don't know if you know the story, but She's it was, crazy, like a, but she was an, hot. An old outlaw who's surfaced, presumed dead, but has surfaced, and is on the run, and I'm the U I've played the U.S. Marshal that's tasked to track him down. So we were shooting a lot of my side of the story, which didn't involve him because he was on the run and I was tracking him down, right? Mm -hmm. So we had just gotten to film Exactly. The, the if you look up Reefer Madness, if you, if you don't know, yeah, it was all the, the, the panic about the evils of weed. It would, it would make you go crazy and insane. And it's a great Reefer Madness. It, watch it awesome uh kyle cowden thank you so much for the super chat it's been a while since we've had a super chat so it's great to be here thank you so much for that uh what happened to brandon was they used the same weapon for beauty and firing the dummy round left one of the slugs in the cylinder that killed me it was the wadding that uh, was on the end of the round which in large part is the reason that they now go to the crimped ends instead of having the paper wadding in the end, uh, because it killed Brandon Lee. That was, that was one of the, that was one of the things that uh, pushed the change through to crimped rounds faster. So, all right, all you pervs keep going. The sequences where I've caught up to him and this is, that's the point in which we, we, I catch up to him. The day prior was, we shot, so we, we shoot out a sequence. That's just normal film and television. We shot the scenes that, that uh, are after this one of, he, we get in a gunfight in the church. 
she sneaks out the back yes. and then takes off down into an arroyo Correct. and then I, Correct. I give chase. We shot that stuff the day before. And then we were shooting this the day of. Me too. Okay. Um, but again, you were asking proximity. So yeah, I would, if, if, if I remember correctly, I think she was probably about four feet away from me when, when it went. Every time. How many shots did you get? And I was told that there were, there was only the one live round in the gun. The other five were dummies. And, you know, we have to send those to the lab just to ensure. Because I remember Dave yelling for the gun, like, where's the, where's the gun? Where's the gun? I want to see it. Uh, so he then inspected it. And, and, but I don't remember. I don't remember what he did with it after that, like I said. Um, yeah. Uh, were there any live rounds in my gun? Or is that to be determined? Um, you had the U.S. Marshal one. Uh -huh. um, we have so many of them that oh, really? they're still processing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, okay. that would be interesting to know because I, I clicked my rounds that morning when I had the gun. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember clicking it when I got back from Marsh. So if there were live rounds in my gun. And you just had one gun on you, right? You went through the double the one so if there was one if there was if there was lives in mine that would be very suspicious because there would have been no reason for someone to have changed those dummies out over lunch they don't empty them for lunch i don't know i don't know Yeah, I was going to ask a question about going back to Hannah. Um, going back to Hannah, do you recall her uh, or witness her ever handling the weapons and safely, like in bundles or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, they would they would have, <laughs> those poor girls would have gun belts just draped on them, you know. They'd have to be like, okay, here's, you know, this actors, and then here's this actors, and here's this actors. So uh, you know, Sarah would have all the gun belts. Hannah would also have the gun belts. They were they were they were helping each other out. Um, but again, at that point, they're they're essentially props until they get loaded with ammunition, and then it becomes an armorer's uh, responsibility. responsibility. Is it uncommon for them to be carrying multiple, or like in your experience with other films, is it uncommon for them to be carrying? multiple guns or multiple belts, anything of the sort. There's nothing that's saying like you have to carry one. Only one at a time. In fact, I, I don't, in my experience, I've seen that from multiple armorers and prop people. They'll, they'll have like a, they'll even have like a, a bag or a, a you know, a, some sort of a, a carrying mold and they'll, they'll dump Man. multiple weapons into it. Um, but because these were in holsters, they would just leave them in the holsters and then put the, the bandoleras, the holsters kind of over their shoulders and then walk them back to their cart or walk them back to the truck. But yeah, it was it was very common for them to like walk out on set and and um, distribute the, the gun belts and the, and the pistols to the actors. Do you know how many were distributed after lunch? It would have been... It would have been just Alec, me, and Swim. Swim? Swim. Swim played uh, like my, my deputy. He played, uh, his character name was Drum, short for Drummond. Um, Did you see anyone outfit him? No. Not that I recall. I mean, we might have been given a gun, we might have been given our, our belts and guns at the same time. I don't know. I don't know. Unusual because you and I were kind of partners and in a lot of scenes together, so we would get our our equipment at the same time. Um, but he wasn't required for that particular uh, setup because he didn't have any dialogue, so he was a little further away than I was. Um, he was just kind of standing uh, standing by waiting for the next setup to happen. But I was a little closer just because I was walking in and giving off camera dialogue. Okay. Hmm. But he did have a weapon at lunch. I think so. I'm not sure, 
they could have, because he wasn't in that first shot, they may not have given it back to him. Oh, God, why are they using this? Why are they, uh, this guy just is moving around and annoys the shit out of me. They have a camera up in the corner. Why Why are they ever using this guy's thing? And then not because I care where the water bottle is. It's just annoying as hell every time he moves around. Needed. Um, Did he only have one weapon on him? Just like me, yeah. Okay. Same style gun, too. The other Marshall one? Correct. So maximum of three guns out at George. Yeah, because yeah, there was that was those were the only we were the only actors and stuff at that point. Okay. Yeah, because I don't think I don't think Brady. I don't. Uh, I mean, he didn't have a gun, but Brady wasn't even there. I don't think. He's the only kid. If anybody would have had like a major safety issue, and I'm just assuming like pretty much. Anyone could call out, like, that they feel something's being unsafe. Uh, anybody. Yeah. If something's unsafe, anybody. Usually it is department heads that will, if it's something that needs to be addressed, then it is the responsibility of. Oh, that hell yeah. Go to a black barbecue to and have that sweet potato pie. Mm. Or for that crew member. Macaroni and cheese and sweet potato pie. Head 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 your life will never be the same. And it is up to first aid to then tell the producers and it goes on up the chain. Okay. Um, so, was there any revamping during this entire time of safety protocols or gun protocols or anything in the sort of that? No. Your life will never be the same no. when you've had a when you've had a real sweet potato pie made by someone's mama. Mm. Do you have any questions for us? So many. You can ask. <laughs> like, I can't guarantee we can give you exact answers, but I mean. Um. No, I, and I, I, my question is, you guys can't answer. Or just, like, I mean, my biggest question is how, like, where, where the bolts, where the, where the rounds come from. You know, if it was, I think I have a good intuition, um, or at least just from statements given and speaking with others, um, I might have a pretty good idea. It's just another confirming that they are the same style round. But it's the same style round. That it, yeah, so we have to send them to the lab and get them to pull the car. Lab. So we're lucky that we didn't set high profile case. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Let's do this. Hey. You reach out to the lab company. We'll go from there. But, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, our our lab here is like a year and a half to two years back. Up. So, oh, I can make my own sweet potato pie too, but it's not as good as oh, you, okay. as your black friend's mom's sweet potato pie. We're gonna get that. We're gonna get answers quicker than that. Yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll probably be at least a couple months, but not a year and a half to two years. Okay, that would be torture. Yeah, I don't really want to do that to everybody. Well, it's also. You know, it's been it's been really difficult for for not just me, but a lot of the a lot of the other people that are part of this cast included to to watch the the media spin and see the, the shit that they're reporting on, which is as we all know, you know, they're they're the in media the, is the media. Yeah, they're not in it's it's not about news anymore, it's about sensationalism. Yeah. Um and so any kind of any kind of uncorroborated claim is now getting reported and people report bullshit. Yeah. And it's really frustrating for someone like me who can say that's bullshit, but can't, but can't really, yeah. They make you know. it sound good, you know, to where people actually believe well, it. Well, because then it's like anything I say then is all of a sudden spun. It's like, oh, he's, you know, he's being uh, um, complacent or he's he's being sensitive to a certain person or he's you know whatever and then and then now i'm the face of, of that news cycle and it's like i don't want that and so it's like we got to keep our mouth shut and we got to just talk to you guys but Smart. it's it's really frustrating to, to watch the news and have all of those hypotheses reported on because i'm just like come on lab yeah. something like give us some hard give us an, an answer so we can shut everybody up. Well, yeah, I mean, it comes down to that. And then, of course, getting, um, you know, statements from 
others involved as well. Are you guys having any, any others uh, come in? Um, we still need to interview a lot of people. Um, oh, really? Pretty much everybody that we can. Um, so I was kind of the, the first one to, to come back for this. Yeah, just to kind of give you, you know, a time span of when you were able to come in according to your schedule. So I wanted to contact you right away and yes. have you pick so but i mean it happened fast and i appreciate that yeah man. Right. yeah really the faster that we can get to everyone and well, what i mean the, it is about thing. getting all these you know sarah and hannah and everybody like speaking with them again and, mm -hmm. and starting to get more questions more answered. detailed questions answered right <clears throat> um yeah I want to try to find that text message. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. That I, I, I can't. What was it? What was the context of it? It was, uh, it was about Hannah uh, going off and, and taking the guns uh, outside of set and playing with them. Like rumor or somebody that had actually. It's rumor if he didn't see it. A part of that. Or, um. Oh, I love real key lime pie. Mm. Oh, sweet potato pie is that good. Uh, Georgina. Oh yeah, See, I, I enjoy my good uh, my my good British Sunday meals, man. I, they, I haven't I haven't made like toad in the hole. I used to make like toad in the hole like every day. I'd have the roast one one week, and then I'd make like some toadies and then some uh, some Yorkies with the with the uh, drippings. Uh, get to get some Yorkshire pudding, some toad in the hole, and just have a great uh, Sunday dinner. Sarah, that's it. Did you receive that text message before the incident took place or after? Oh no, after this is after. This is this is a, a, a how did you know how did live rounds get on set? And then somebody saying, Well, I heard, or there was an email, or something to that effect. You can always uh, screenshot it and send it to people. Okay. Find it too. Um, what's a good way to get a hold of you for any of the questions? You got my number, right? Stand by, yes, ladies. Right He's going to so, give his phone number. I'll see if I can't find it. It's, I thought it was. God, I hope it's blocked. I hope they don't show it. It's not there, so we'll see if I can't find it. But, um, but yeah, I was essentially uh, saying that. Um, and again, I, I, have no, I have no reason to believe this or not believe it, but it was just, you know, you guys are trying to uncover any possibilities. It was. Uh, um, that Hannah had requested uh, use of the firearms over the weekend to go shooting and was denied. Uh, it's something about that being in an email, but then she went ahead and did it anyway and talked to the transpo guy, opening up the prop truck and her getting access to it. And then is this an incident where the police interview is actually going to be positive PR uh, for the person, increase their overall popularity? Probably. Darkness, but then it was. I guess got intoxicated and doesn't remember putting them back. Or... That's a lot of uh, quite a bit of speculation. Is that was... It is. Yeah, we haven't had anybody actually come forward and, and say that specifically. Oh, uh, my brother-in-law yeah, makes the that, best that Dutch oven peach cobbler. Ugh. I was like, okay, well, that's probably easy to figure out. You go talk to Transpo, and you find out if there was actually a guy that opened up the truck for him on a weekend. Um, you. Uh, Oh, even finding that, even the email. Yeah, yeah find, yeah, find, yeah, somebody find that email, which would have been uh, props. Um, so it would have gone to like Sarah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But again, that's not for me. This was just, this was kind of a, a, word, of mouth. a word of mouth 
scenario that that came my you know came my way, and I was like, huh. I don't know when this took that place. Seems uh, more probable. A week or two after the shooting, because he flew in just to do the uh, interview. Come forward to to say that. To confirm it was. So then maybe it was just hearsay. Um, do you have any other questions for us? Mm, I think so. I put um, my work cell on the back of my car. Cool. That way, um, do you have any questions or anything else that we're moving forward? We can go there. Um, can we talk to Dave? Or I saw Dave uh, at the our little memorial thing that we had uh, the day after. Um, and he's He's a wreck. Um, he was really shook up. I just remember saying, I'm, I'm so sorry, man, because I know it happened on his watch. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoyed working with him. I thought he was good. I thought he was a really good AD. I mean, they, they've got one of the toughest. Toad in the whole, well, the, the, the Brits here can tell you more than me. It's, it's essentially like a they're running the sausages in a, baked in a pastry. So uh, Delicious. And if something happens like this, they instantly get fingers pointed at them. Um, even if he had never touched the gun, he still would be uh, he, he still would be getting fingers pointed at because he's the he's the guy. It's his set. He's running the safety of that set. And I just remember saying to him that I'm I'm just so sorry, man, that this happened to him because he he uh, my experience with him was was. A very positive one, um, and I, I didn't. I don't like seeing stuff like this happen to good people. Right. It sounds like you didn't have a negative experience with really anybody on set, though. Uh, no. Besides, I'm pretty yeah. amicable. Besides, well, besides your <laughs> one cameraman. Um. Yeah, but even still, I tried to. I tried to be nice and make friends with him, just because I thought maybe he needed, you know, needed somebody nice in his life. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, I really love what I do. I really enjoy being on set. I mean, I think I told you this over the phone. I, I, was, I was pretending to act like Clint Eastwood, but inside I was around like six year old. I'm so excited to be able to play a cowboy and ride horses and shoot guns. And, I mean, growing up in Texas, in Dallas, I know sure uh, your cowboys watch there. That game was pretty good last night. So they're looking good. I know. Um, Even all right, we're talking out. about the cowboys I mean, now. I think we're know, coming I, to the I, end of the interview. This was a, this was a dream for me to do. This is just the winding trip. down phase. And so I was just super excited to be there and was having a ton of fun with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to other people, it was just a job. It was just a paycheck, but not to a lot of us. To a lot of us, this was, this was something mm. really unique and Delish. fun. I mean, even Alec had said, he's like, I've never done a Western. I always wanted to do one. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of, a lot of us that felt, felt that way. Um, so if I saw somebody that was just kind of like, uh, I just tried to turn them up and be like, it's the problem, man. We're out. It's beautiful. Look at this weather. This the sky. We're shooting a Western. Get over yourself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I was having, I, I, I had a pretty positive experience up there okay. with everybody. And I just, it breaks my heart that this, this happened on a variety of levels. I mean that we lost a, a, an incredible talent and uh, you know friend, um, but also that we all lost this. We all lost this movie together, so we're mourning that too, which is it's tough. It's a, on a variety of levels. I mean, part of me wanted to just come back just to like, like I I think I'm going to try to go out to the ranch today because I just want to like say goodbye. I guess. Yeah. It's difficult for many people there. I mean, it was hard even that day to interview, you know? A lot of people were just so emotional and well that day certainly, I mean that's that's like it's that kind of initial trauma emotion of, of experiencing something that's you know. And now it's the moving on from that. But now it's yeah, it's the yeah. it's the how do I compartmentalize this now? You know. I've never talked to a therapist. Yes. In my life. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> And I, uh, I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm scheduled to next week or this week. So we'll see how that goes. It might be a clusterfuck. It's always good. 
I don't know if I need to unpack it with a stranger, but uh, but it's weird too. Like going home, like I said, like my wife is, you know, she's 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 emotional about it. Well, I'm sure in her mind she's thinking, what if that was you? That and also that we had an eight year old. I know there was a nine year old kid who lost his mom. That's the hard part is being able to not personalize something really, especially when it's so close to you. Yeah, and it's hard not to play the what if because that gun was about to point at me in yeah. the scene. You know? And was I about to get in a firefight with Alec Baldwin and we were shooting live rounds? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh... Right at the end here. Now we're getting into the feels. Were we about to like Swiss cheese each other? Mm. Fuck. That's why I'm like, who the fuck brought live rounds on my set? That's what I want to know. In due time, we'll, yeah. we'll have hopefully every question answered but it does you know I no i know i know it takes time it takes and it takes time. due diligence and that's that's why i was like that was good um, you need me out here for to help and move the move the needle anyway i'm on my way thank you for being here yeah, definitely and thanks for uh thanks for taking this on i know this is probably a, a monster for you guys um but thank you no thank, thank you. you for doing what you guys do yeah. Unless you enjoy your day, I don't know. I'm sure the ranch owners are probably out there. You might be able to. Yeah, I think I'm going to call production. Production said that they would call out there and clear security. And yeah, I know they were still working out there last week. Go so. walk the property. Yeah. Because yeah. there's another film, I think, filming somewhere else yeah. on the ranch as well, which could. Yeah. Oh, God, okay. stop playing with the All dumb. Right. God, you dumb, stupid cop. If you have any questions or anything, give us a call, man. I really appreciate you coming out and, and doing it so quickly. Yeah, no, again, I, I, you know, I want to get this ball in as much as you can. All right. That's the end. The end. <laughs> wow. Um, huh. That was that was a really really good interview that uh, Jensen Ackles did. I mean that that was that was good, spot on interview. Perfect questions I thought from the police. Perfect answers from him. Answered a lot of things, and it uh, it kind of exposed a lot of shortages in in uh, Baldwin's statements. Um. <sighs> kind of calls into question some other things going on, but I mean, that was a straight up, absolutely amazing interview. Uh, you did very, very well. Now, now I'm even more convinced that they're going to use Hannah as a star witness. I mean, yeah. She, sure. She did things wrong. Sure. She could be charged. Uh, she, clearly she was negligent in some respects, but because she was sort of the one that was in the center of everything, I'm I, I'm almost certain if any of this ever goes to trial, she is going to be the star witness for the prosecution, and she will not be charged. Now, Amber Fox says she's going to be charged. I don't think she's going to be charged. She's she's the only one that can really testify as to what Alec Baldwin did when he was fucking around, what Sarah did when she's fucking around, what David Halls was doing when he was fucking around, what Seth was doing when he was fucking around. She's really the only one that can testify about everybody. So I think they're going to say, we're going to charge you with this, 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 and this, this. You're looking at this many years in prison. You uh, you tell us what we want to know. You ask, you you act as a witness for us, and we'll let you off. So I'm, I'm thinking she's not going to be charged. Not because she doesn't need to be charged or deserve to be charged, but because she is going to flip and be, be a uh, witness for the prosecution. So yeah, I mean, she, uh, we've, it's time to wrap up. Uh, just, we 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 should we should start out with a poll. I should have done a poll earlier. Um, yeah, we'll we'll do that next time. 
Do I really think this will go? Somebody has to be. Ch- There's a dead woman and a guy with a bullet in his shoulder. Somebody has to be charged with something. And like I said, about a, I've been thinking about a 60% chance that Alec Baldwin will be charged, probably with negligent homicide or whatever they call it in, in New Mexico. Uh, he pleads. Uh, he's given probation. That's the end of his. If if you know if he gets charged, I I think David Halls is probably the likely one to get charged. Um, at least, and there's some higher up people that were doing some bullshit too, like the woman that was telling him. Her name escapes me for the second. Is telling Hannah, "You're on a budget. You're done. Stop fucking around with this armory shit. Don't do briefings. Don't do safety training. Leave Alec Baldwin alone and go be a prop person." There's, I mean, there's a chance she's going to get, she, she could get uh, charged, but somebody is going to get charged. Somebody, if they don't plea out is going to trial pickles. Yeah. That was her name. Uh, yeah. Pickle pickles, whatever the hell her name was. That was her. So yeah, I think someone's going to get charged David halls and maybe some higher up people, Sarah, perhaps Alec, maybe, uh, I don't, but I do not think that Hannah is getting charged with anything. She's going to be the star witness. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But wow, I really like that interview. Uh, Sarah's for, I mean, it's the first one from Sarah when you know, when they immediately after the shooting, uh, I don't think that helped anybody one way or the other. I mean, you're not expected to be super awesome and you know, coherent a few minutes after you've just seen someone blown away. Um, yeah, so all in all, it didn't her her deal didn't mean anything to me. Jensen Ackles said his 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 questioning was pretty darn good. I was I thought that was really solid. I'm happy to see there was at least one person on set that was smart. And dang, he 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 was he was sharp, he was to the point, and uh yeah. Let's see, there, there yeah. Porcelain Thunder says, uh, we have Korean barbecue here in the U.S. Do they have American barbecue here in Korea? Smoked brisket, pulled pork, smoked ribs? Yes, they do, actually. There's a, that's kind of becoming really popular now. There's a there's a place right down the street from my office in a shopping mall. I mean, it's, it's mall barbecue, you know, but uh, it, it's still pretty decent. Uh, there's there's a, a big smokehouse that just opened up about 30 minutes down the road up in the mountains. Really freaking good. Um, yeah, if I'm not cooking my own, I'm going to the other place. Well, it's getting on hmm, 1240 a.m. here. Uh, and that's the end of yet another Alec Baldwin day. Uh, I think ne- unless uh, unless they release some more of the interrogation videos, uh, next time, probably in a week or two, we'll probably look at some of the lawsuits, uh, some of the civil suits, one filed by, by Helena's family. And uh, some... And, and a, a, a suit filed by the Alec Baldwin and the production company seeking to get out of any civil liability and why he's probably, why, why Alec Baldwin is probably not going to pay a dime for any civil liability. We'll talk about that next time. So keep that in your mind. Let that foment a little bit, let it ferment. Uh, see how, see how everything goes. Uh, what's coming up in the legal vices future tomorrow uh, ordinarily, we, we've been doing the O.J. Simpson opening statements on Thursday. Uh, we're moving that to Wednesday. We'll be doing op- opening statements, the conclusion of the defense opening statements in the O.J. Simpson trial tomorrow. We all loved Johnny Cochran's dress, his demeanor, his attitude, and his presentation last week uh, when we watched it. We watched the first part, then we watched up to the lunch break, and then they took their lunch break, and we'll watch the remainder of the of Johnny Cochran's opening statement tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, Thursday is up in the air. I have to go to hell on Thursday. For me, I, I have to go to this big uh, you know, business association reception thing. Uh, the only reason I'm going is it's free beer at the uh, best brewer in, in Busan. And well, probably the best brewer in Korea. Uh, <laughs> free, free beer and, ironically, free barbecue. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a beer and barbecuing. That is the only reason I'm going. If I hate, I hate receptions more than you can possibly imagine. Uh, like seriously, if you know, there, there's that idea you know, that hell is is like our own making. 
you know what we make our own hell in the afterlife that'll be if, if there is a hell and if i go there that'll be that's what it'll be it'll be a reception i'll just be in a room with 300 people i don't know forced to interact with them and introduce myself repeatedly uh but so i have to go to this reception on thursday and i don't know what time is going to finish uh if i do a show thursday it's just going to be a meaningless thing we might watch some uh some police arrest videos and just do a chill stream um you know just to just kind of hang out but if i do it would be at least like 9 a.m eastern 10 a.m eastern maybe and do it for an hour or two at the very freaking most uh, <laughs> uh am i moving too much i'm just i've been sitting down for like what eight hours in the office and now three and a half at four hours here i've been sitting down for 12 hours i'm fidgety all right there we go. I'll sit here for you people that, that don't like me moving around by this point tonight. I'm, I just want to move. I've been sitting for 12 damn hours. Ah, all right. Ah. There you happy, Emmy. I'm just going to sit here just for you and look like a prisoner in a video. <laughs> That's what happens when you sit down for 12 hours. You get fidgety. <sighs> all right. So I have to do that on Thursday. If I do a stream on Thursday, it will be 9 or 10 a.m. Eastern time when I do it, and it'll be for a regular short period of time. Uh, the the next day, well, okay, and, that, and that's exactly, Matthew G and I, that's exactly what is my, my femur, like when I shattered my femur. If I sit a long time, it gets really tight on the, on, on the back of my femur. Uh, but anywho, that's beside the point. Um, Friday, it will be fair and balanced. Farron will be on my channel. We'll be, uh, we'll be doing our weekly unexplained. We thought, we thought her sister was, you know, Hannah was going to be with her, but, uh, she's got some other things to do. So Hannah will not be there. It'll just be Farron and I will be doing that. And then on Sunday, Sunday, it'll be Sunday morning, my time, Saturday night, uh, us time. I'm going to do a members only stream. Just, just, just sit around and talk. Um, so if you, if you've joined the memberships at any level, there will be a, a, the, the first members only stream. Uh, and then we'll do, we'll also do a few. There's, there's a few people that have signed up for like the second tier level. So we'll probably at some point do a very, very special live stream for the second tier people. The, what is it? What is it? The, the uh, bent halos and broken wings level. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll be doing on Sunday. And then uh, Monday we'll come back with a, and I'll be very late the next Monday, but we'll still do a little bit of maritime stuff. We'll watch some ship collisions and things. Uh, and that's, that's what we're looking at again, real quickly, because I interrupted myself about 843 times tomorrow will be OJ Simpson. Thursday is up in the air. Keep it posted. I'm going to try j just plan on there being a Thursday show just a little bit later than usual. And it'll be, it'll be shorter Then Friday will be fair and balanced. Sunday will be a members only stream next Monday will be a later edition of, uh, maritime Monday because I've got to, I've got a dinner appointment and some things to do on Monday. So I'll be just a little bit late. Uh, and that should, that'll take us up to, uh, for the next several days. It's been awesome. Awesome stuff. Oh, uh, well, Matthew Gian Giannotti asks, uh, have, you, have you ever been consulted by forensic engineers? Oh, we, we, we get expert engineers all the time, you know, surveyors and uh, people like that. And you know, the engineering experts. Yeah, we use, we use them all the time. So with that, I guess we're nearing the end of our, uh, our little adventure here. Let me scrap scroll up here just to make sure i didn't miss any super chats coming under the radar i seem to have got them all taken care of thank you so much for this awfully chill stream it's a pleasure to spend my evening with you yes there is no rust movie there will be no rust movie it has been suspended indefinitely uh but that's what that asshole Alec Baldwin wanted to do because he was getting points on the end. He wanted he wanted to finish it, finish it for Helena. It's what Helena would have wanted. No, nah, it's what your it's what your bank book would have wanted. So, as we work our way out of the show, it's always difficult for me to say goodbye. Um, let me just remind you of a few things. 
hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And if you have subscribed, make sure you are still subscribed. And if not, just make that thing gray. Red is bad. Gray is good. We are currently at 24,947 subscribers. We need 53 more to get me to 25,000. So if there's 53 of you that haven't subscribed, just get down there and do it right now. You'll like the channel. We're going to be doing lots of fun stuff, and you're invited to all of it. Uh, I want to get up to 25,000 as soon as possible. Three weeks from two weeks from this Friday, we'll be having my uh, my monthly Fuck It Friday drunken griftathon, and it will also be a celebration of 25,000 subscribers, assuming that we have 25 subscribers thousand subscribers by that point which i'm sure we will because you are also awesome and you're all going to subscribe because that's what good people you are uh so yeah october 7th mark that on your friday calendar open your pocketbooks bring your grift money uh get me liquored up and <laughs> it's it's a hundred dollars a shot it's just a total fun fest it's ridiculous. We do it. It's just fun. Everybody come and join in the stream and watch it. We get drunk. We get liquored up. We do fun stuff. And we'll have, hopefully, because this will be the 25,000 subscriber extravaganza, um, I plan on inviting everybody who sort of kind of helped get me where I am today so quickly. Uh, I have no idea how many of them will attend, if any, but I'm going to be sending out uh, invites to uh, to Nick, Ricada, to Legal Mindset, Uncivil Law, to Nate the Lawyer, to uh you know, law talk with mike legal bites well you know uh you know, law of self-defense you know, we're, we'll, i'll just send them out to anybody you know the you know, meme copium uh you know law patrol or what uh, aussie overlord he's calling himself these days i'll send i'll be sending these out to everybody and we'll just see who who shows up and it'll sort of be a this is your youtube life moment with people that i just want to give thanks to and have them on to it'll just be fun hopefully so that's kind of it everybody mods you have done a stupendous job as always my mods rock you guys are the best it's the best chat in the in the entire youtube universe hands down i have the best chat the vice squad you guys rock couldn't do this without you wouldn't want to do this without you wouldn't need to do it without you uh thank you so much for the super chats that came in today that's always always yeah we want the no tie blanket to come with us um yeah it's super chats are always always appreciated it's always humbling when when people send them. Uh, hit the like button. Where are we at here? 544 likes. There's 405 of you here. 64 of you hit that like button and just get us up to an even 600 on, the, on your way out. That would be awesome. Oh, I, I'm moving again. Amy's going to start yelling at me. All right. With that, take care. Like, subscribe, hit the notifications, join the memberships if you want to be part of the uh, exclusive membership club. And until tomorrow night, when we hit the OJ Simpson defense opening statement conclusion, y'all take care of yourself. Enjoy your night. Enjoy your morning. Enjoy your afternoon. Enjoy whatever you're doing, but just make sure you always, always, always enjoy your legal vices. See you later. <laughs>